Welcome, everyone. It's 54 degrees in Phoenix, Arizona, and the roof is off at the Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix. Welcome, everyone, to the Insight.com Ball, which will feature the Pittsburgh Panthers out of the Big East under head coach Walt Harris. It's been outstanding, though, John, this year, 7-4. and four. Three games that they lost, Steve, by a total of 13 points, or else they can play for BCS. Walt Harris is concerned about the fact that maybe, just maybe, this game, if they were to win, could get them up to that next level. And maybe even a bigger story is Iowa State, their first bowl appearance in 22 years, led by Dan McCarney. Very affable gentleman, and of course, long overdue for the program. He is absolutely adored in Ames as to what he has done. An 8-3 season, and of course, they'd like to climax that with a victory today. Among the fans in attendance, they're talking about close to what they have set for the capacity in this baseball stadium of 50,000 for football. There's talk that some 20,000 Iowa State fans came, some of them driving the 22 hours. Well, as you pointed out, Steve, 22 years, it's a long time between drinks. Dave Ryan is with us as well. We'll get thoughts from him in a little bit. Pittsburgh is the visiting team. They won the toss, and they are set to kick it away with Nick Box. It's in the air, and we're underway. The first ever football game here at the Bank One Ballpark. And it's J.J. Moses on the return. And the Cyclones will open up first and 10 from their own 18. The starting lineups, Sage Rosenfels leads the fourth best offense in Iowa State history. And the rest of our starting lineups brought to you by Bex. Man to look at is J.J. Moses, all of 5'6", five, 5'7", five, he thinks. But regardless, punts, kickoff, returns, receptions, he is the main man outside, big play guy for the Cyclones. So here we go, the Cyclones, the home team in the very attractive red jerseys to go with those red pants. Two receivers bottom of your screen. They send the man, J.J. Moses, in motion, and they hand it off. First play on the ground to Ennis Haywood. He's their standout running back. He picks up a couple on the play. The offensive line for Iowa State, it's a good one, led by Ben Bruns in the middle. They allowed only seven sacks all season, second best in the nation. And that particular, that particular stat is going to be tested by the defensive line of Pittsburgh, spearheaded by Brian Knight, their tremendous pass rusher, over 20 tackles for loss on the season two tight ends now for Iowa State after the three-yard gain by Haywood Haywood the single setback Rosenfels on the option pitches it late to Haywood and he picks up a couple more yards where he's bumped out of bounds by Ramon Walker the linebackers for you for Pittsburgh three good ones Amir Purifoy is the emotional leader of this Panther defense gonna have to have a lot of run support from the secondary particularly the man you just saw Ramon Walker he is the key he is the captain out there the center fielder for the Panthers brings up a third down third and three they go four wide receivers two to the right two to the left for the quarterback Sage Rosenfels the 22-year-old senior. Roosevelt drops, looks right, and throws right, and completes. And it'll go for a first down to Lane Danielson. They do give them the marking there for the first down. And let's join third member of our broadcast. It's Dave Ryan. Dave? All right, guys, thanks a lot. We're here at the Bob, normally the home, of course, of the Arizona Diamondbacks. But bowl officials here in Phoenix have had to reconfigure this ballpark for college football. Now, you see how close the sideline is to the first couple rows of stands. A lot of the fans here in the first couple rows are so close to the action, they may catch a ball or two. And the fans in the end zones are particularly excited. That's because there are no nets there to catch anything. Well, watch this play, Stephen, finish it up after this. The blitz was coming. Rosenfels had to unload. It'll go incomplete. Plenty of pressure there by Gerald Hayes. Dave? So, guys, for all the field goal attempts and PA attempts, PAT attempts that go into the stands, the fans get to keep them. It's kind of like arena football. If the ball goes in there, they got to keep it as a souvenir. Fortunately, we rehearsed that segment four or five times. We're out four or five footballs. <laughs> And an interesting point here, I'm thinking that this, certainly the people in the stands have to be rooting for the bowl, like the bowl game in front of us, a 49-38 to 38 game. That was a tremendous game. Congratulations to Don Nealon in West Virginia. That pass is complete to a wide-open J.J. Moses. 
got the first down and more. Sean Robinson finally brought him down after the gain of 16. I'm certainly impressed with Moses, obviously, the numbers that he has put up this year, but particularly receiving. It's a difficult target when you have a youngster that's only five foot six, but you can see he pushes the defender up the field, now makes a couple of moves, and it takes some people to get him down. Sean Robinson gave him a little bit too much room there. First down for the Cyclones. Paul Rhodes, the Pittsburgh defensive coordinator, said they were going to change some things up, not go as much man-to-man -man as they normally do all season. They might go a little two-man zone against Moses. Here's from the shotgun now on first down and 10. Two receivers out to the right, and they hand it off to Michael Wagner. Wagner's first carry of the game. He's got a couple of yards, and he's out to the 46-yard line. Wagner, Wagner put together some quality minutes for the Cyclones. In fact, that was one of the things that the coach was talking about, McCarney. He mentioned the fact that he's got three quality runners, even though Haywood gets the bulk of the carries. Might be somewhat of a problem next season. It'll be a good problem. Second down and eight. Off play action, they fake the handoff, fake the reverse, and Rosenfels is firing. Ball comes up short. The intended receiver was Craig Campbell. He was looking for a flag, and Shantae Spencer, the true freshman, was there stride for stride. And Spencer does a nice job here. So many times when it appears that you might get an interception or you might be able to do something with the ball, at the last minute, Spencer realizes he's turned around a little bit. So rather than be turned around and give up a cheap, long pass, Spencer does the right thing. He turns around, waves his arm, and bats the thing down. Nice job of the true freshman. A starting true freshman quarterback wow. in the Big East. That's really saying it something. Is. Third down and eight. Rosenfels from the shotgun. Two receivers to his right. Now he steps up under center. Didn't like what he saw, and he will call the timeout. And we'll step out with 12-17 to go in a scoreless first quarter from Phoenix. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, and Dave Ryan. Happy holidays, everyone, as we bring you the first-ever Insight.com Bowl in Phoenix. The old Copper Bowl and Insight.com Bowl previously played in Tucson. We come back for a third down and eight play. And here's Rosenfeld, straight drop, gets pressure, throws across the middle. And it's in and out of the fingertips of J.J. Moses. Good pressure from Gerald Hayes of Pittsburgh. Chante Robinson, they had what they wanted man for man. They picked up the blitz. Rosenfeld had plenty of time. This is a ball he wishes he could have had back. This is a great job by the offensive front for Iowa State, keeping them out. Seven people coming at the last minute. You're right. There's a little bit of pressure. Steve Rosenfeld had plenty of time. He's just a little bit long with that one. The star receiver for Pittsburgh is also the punt returner, Antonio Bryant. Took some time to sell him on that notion of how important it is to be the punt returner. But he's doing it now. Here's Carl Gomez in the red to kick it away for Iowa State. And Bryant. Oh! Fumble! The ball is loose. There is a flag down as Pittsburgh recovers. Didn't give him enough room, Steve. He never signaled for a fair catch, but he's still got to be given the chance to catch the football. And it would certainly appear that Iowa State did not afford him that opportunity. Well, right off the bat, Steve, that shows how fearless Antonio Bryant is because you know that the gunner that's coming down is right in his face. He's aware of the fact that Densmore is on top of him. But what ends up happening here is he says, you know what? This is something we've been talking about all year. What's the point of a fair catch if this is what has to happen? He sits there, waits on it, and, of course, it looked like he was losing it before Densmore hit him. So, actually, that was a bit of a break for Pittsburgh where that's concerned. And you hear some of the, the smattering of boos, but it was a good call by the official. Cooper Castleberry is our referee, all from the Western Athletic Conference. Non-contact, kick-catch interference on the kicking team. Penalties refused. First step. So Pittsburgh will take the field, and their offense will be led by their quarterback, John Turman. Prior to the BC game on October 26th, there was a battle for the starting position, and since then, Turman has been the man. The rest of our Beck starting lineup, backs and receivers. Terrific wide receivers, but don't forget they have a good one in tailback, Kevin Barlow, over 1,000 yards on the season. Pittsburgh's first play from scrimmage. And they hand it off to Kevin Barlow. And Barlow is halfway to a first down. 
the Pittsburgh offensive line. Jeff McCurley, prior to the last game of the regular season, was the starting center. But to give them more depth, they move him to left guard. And Chad Reed, McCurley's backup, starts at center. We talk about Reggie Hayward, what a terrific force he is. But the man, Ryan Harclaw, is the man that's going to have to have a terrific game up front to prevent the run. Brings up a second down and four now out of the I formation. And they hand it off to Barlow again. Picks up two more yards on the play. And the linebackers for Iowa State, Stevie Johnson, if that name sounds familiar, a star basketball player on the Iowa State team playing football for the first time since high school. And arguably the most significant matchup that you're going to watch today, number eight, Jamarcus Powers. Iowa State is going to do what they can to get Powers on Bryant as often as possible. Todd, and a nice gesture by Dan McCarney started all the seniors in the defensive backfield. Those, all of those do not normally start, but because of their first bowl appearance in 22 years, starting all seniors on third down and long, a flat, third and one rather, a flat and it looked like a tight end, Mike Bosnick jumped. Really foolish, too, in that situation to have to do that. And, of course, a tight end, a tight end can flinch a little ball, bit. I think false start on the offense. Truthfully, Five Steve, yards, still third down. Having played the position, I'm telling you that, and Walt Harris knows it, too, but he doesn't want to complain about it because he's, he's got his third and sixth play set to go. But a tight end can flinch a little bit because he is technically a receiver, not, not like the five interior people. As if your position needed any extra advantages, you got them, huh? <laughs> it doesn't seem fair. We needed plenty. Give me a break. But there's a big difference between third and one and third and six, obviously. Or They'll seven. They'll call it third and seven. Terman, single setback is Barlow. Two receivers to the left top of your screen. Here's Terman to throw. Steps up to the pressure. He's got running room, but not enough running room for the first down, although with a slide, he'll be very close to the marker. Matt Word, the middle linebacker, made this stop. And a good play by Word, because if he doesn't, it's automatically a first down. They'll measure it. Bryant kind of gets mugged at the line of scrimmage right there. Powers gets away with a little bit of holding. But then again, look at the number of red shirts that are in the vicinity. That is not man-for-man -man coverage, folks. You have a linebacker out there. You have a safety. That was triple coverage on that, on that play for Bryant. And Steve, as we have a little bit of time to talk about it, don't forget now, Latif Grimm is a terrific receiver. His numbers are down this year because they featured Bryant. But if they're going to pile up the two and three people on that one side, look for Grimm to have a big day as you can see it's a first down. You know, and you wondered with the, the big year that Grimm and Bryant had, but mostly by Bryant, you wondered as you look at their numbers, there might be any jealousy. Well, give you an indication that there's no jealousy at all. This is the first time all season the players have been allowed to pick their roommate, and Bryant and Grimm picked each other to be roommates on the road. So there's no problem there between the two with Bryant getting all the attention. And he is getting that. Nonetheless, give Grimm, Grimm credit. He can still play. On first down and 10 now. After the favorable spot, Herman's not going to like this spot as he is finally dropped down by Doug Densmore. The first sack of the game. Let's go to Chris Fowler back in our studio. Well, fellas, Minnesota stumbled down the stretch of the regular season, but a very sharp start in the Micron PC Bowl against NC State. Kellis Redmond just waltzing in for the touchdown. Gophers up 14-0. Steve? All right, Chris, thanks very much. We've got a little Minnesota flavor in this game. Steve Loney, the offensive coordinator for Iowa State. Of course, did Gophers offense the previous two seasons. Back in Ames now. Second down and 18 after the sock. After the sack, they get the play just off. And he's determined under some more pressure. Running for his life, and he takes a hard hit. The football pops loose. Now the official's saying he's down. Iowa State nearly a golden opportunity off the huge break, but in, turn, in fact, it's Pittsburgh that gets the break as Terman was running for his life. If you could read lips, you saw Dan McCarney say that was not down. We'll get a chance to see it for ourselves, and you can see there he said something else there. Had to do with bovine feces. We'll leave that alone. There's the knee. Good call by the official. Both knees are down. The official right on top of it. Excellent job. Herman just gets back really to the original line of scrimmage, maybe just shy of that. Brings up a third and 11. Here's Terman again, gets some time now. Love 
takes one. He's got him. He's got a man wide open. And it's Bryant. Touchdown. The big play player comes through. A 72-yard touchdown bomb. Turman to Bryant. The very thing that we talked about at the top of the show that they wanted to avoid. Yes, it's okay. Catch some six and seven yarders. Catch a couple of first downs. Move the sticks, but don't let this happen. Jamarcus Powers, he cuts to the inside. Now he splits the defenders. For whatever reason, Powers opted for the flat, and the result is costly. Brian able to split the defenders, and let's give credit where credit is due, Steve. Terman put that ball right on the money. Twelfth touchdown catch of the season for Brian. He even gave it a little wave to let his quarterback know, hey, I'm going to be open here. And they come on to attempt the extra point. And the extra point is good. Pittsburgh strikes via the big play. 72 yards. Turbin to Bryant. 7 0 Panthers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Insight.com Bowl is presented by Insight. High tech, low cost, smart business. And in part by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Top. And by Bosch Platinum Plus 4. Take your engine to a higher power. Antonio Bryan on the receiving end of the touchdown. Nick Lotz, the extra point. Pittsburgh, the 7-0 lead. And how impressive. Now, this is the eighth, eighth play of over 50 yards in the season for Antonio Bryan. He can do it all. Now, take a look as he takes out. Powers is going to go and float into the flat. Now, right here, right here, he, sl he slips out. He's out here. Densmore is in here. He can't run with him. And the result is he split. Powers realizes his mistake, comes back to the center, but it's too late. And again, give credit to Terman because that was a terrific throw. Six foot two, 190 pounds, great hands, great speed. Bryant is certainly something special. Mentioned the winner of the Bolitnikoff Award. I have to point out that prior to the season, he didn't know what Bolitnikoff was. Lutz puts it in the air, actually slipped down after he kicked it off. So it's a short kick, and J.J. Moses looks to make something out of it. Moses cuts to the outside. And he is out to the 28-yard line. That's where they'll operate first and 10 from. Let's go down to the field and Dave. Oh, Steve, you would not believe the electricity that long touchdown pass John Terman to Bryant created here on the Pittsburgh bench a few minutes ago. Now, Walt Harris went right to the offensive line, added John Terman to Bryant, said, great job, good to get on the board early, but let's not get overconfident. Don't get too excited. A long way to go. He wants to keep everyone's emotions in check early in this game. All right, Dave, 7-0 Pittsburgh. First and ten now for Iowa State. We'll see how they counter. They open with three receivers. And here's Rosenfels. They'll keep it himself. Trying to slant through for a couple of yards and picks up four. Ramon Walker made the stop for the Panthers. Tremendous all-around athlete pointed out that he did five different sports. Of course, you asked the question, how could you do that? Well, in Iowa, their baseball season is in the summer. So they play football, basketball, baseball, tennis. And then he ran on the relays on the track team. We asked him the sport he enjoyed the most. He said golf. We asked him the sport he might be the best at. He said it might be <laughs> basketball, actually. Yeah, he said, I'd like to think football. Of course it is. Swing pass is complete to Moses. Anytime they can get the football into his hands, they will. Sean Robinson finally brought him down. Over the last couple of years, there have been a lot of very successful short runners. And you can see one of the reasons. You notice that as he got the ball and headed upfield, not only his quickness, but with his low center of gravity, sometimes if you just reach out and you grab him by the shoulders, you can't get him. Reminds me years ago, though, it's old. I remember the theory of Hank Stram when he had those miniature runners back there and Tank Holmes and Mike Garrett, both five foot nine. But of course, Moses, at least according to him, five foot seven. 15 yard gain for Moses, even if he's going to fib about his height an <laughs> inch or two. Here's Rosenfels, option to the right. He'll keep it again and cross midfield, and he's into Pittsburgh territory. Brian Knight brought him down, making the stop for Pittsburgh. Surprising to me as they run the option, you'd think to yourself, a team that runs the option periodically has to be a team that gives the ball up. You know, they just kind of take that for granted. This is an amazing, and I do mean amazing statistic, Sands broadcaster hyperbole. Look at that. Only three fumbles lost in the last four years. That is astonishing. 
And of course, that's got to be very comfortable to the offensive Cognizetti knowing that they're not going to turn the ball over. And we were told it's not as if they fumbled and recovered their own fumble, which wouldn't count as, a, as an official fumble. That's not even the case. High snap. Rosenfeld's able to bring it down. And it's Hayward taking off down the right sideline. And he's finally bumped down inside the 30. Shantae Spencer knocked him out of bounds. And Iowa State trying to get something going after the big play Pittsburgh touchdown. Lorenzo White and Andy Stensu do a nice job. Watch the right side of the offensive line and look at the hole. Right there, cuts to the outside. Good vision on the part of Haywood, who gets to the outside to get the extra yard. He's rushed for over 1,200 yards on the season, Steve. Led the Big 12 in that category. Picked up 16 on that play. Brings up a first down and 10 now. Two tight ends for Iowa State. Want to get some momentum back on this drive. It's Haywood again. And he is banged down at the 26 by Walker of Pittsburgh along with Gerald Hayes. Always fascinated by the psychology of the game. You have a 72-yard bomb, and as Dave Ryan pointed out, the excitement of the sideline. For whatever reason, sometimes it doesn't carry over to the other side. And give that man credit. You know, the Iowa State sideline could be devastated. Instead, they come out here, and as you point out, Steve, a methodical drive. They don't panic and have to throw the ball down the field. A couple of options, a couple of off tackles. They're in great shape here on the 26-yard line. And in some cases, this kind of methodical drive might actually be better than a big play strike themselves answering back. Get some time off the clock and get into a bit of a rhythm as Haywood is doing just that. Down to the 23, Ryan Smith the stop. Shows the power of the 206 pounder as he leans forward. That looked like about a one yard gain. I said he carried some white shirts and now a very makeable third and short. It's the first meeting ever between these two schools, Pittsburgh and Iowa State. That's one of the neat things about these kind of bowls, bringing schools together that would normally never see the other in an out-of-conference game. Third and short now. Two receivers to the left bottom of your screen. Here's Rosenfels now, dropping back and throwing. Touch on the ball. I Got it. Oh. Touchdown. Touchdown to Chris Anthony. And the Cyclones do answer back. Well, Rosenfeld, Steve, coming into this game, had eight touchdowns and 12 interceptions, which would indicate to you that he's not necessarily a great thrower. But he moves to his left, pivots back, gets his right foot planted, and puts his ball right on the money. The coverage isn't awful, but the throw could not have been any better. 23-yard pass play, Rosenfels to Anthony. And it's Carl Gomez on to attempt the extra point. They're going to fight for the ball in the stands. It's up, it's good, and <laughs> let's see. <laughs> it's not like, you know, in baseball, when a baseball goes into the crowd, those are, what, $3? These footballs are expensive, folks. Iowa State answers right back on a pretty pass play of their own. 4.52 to play here in the first quarter. Pittsburgh and Iowa State now tied at 7. Welcome back, everyone, to the Bank One Ballpark. Steve Levy along Todd Christmas. Really neat atmosphere with the fact these are two programs who struggled most recently. Here, the excitement in Phoenix to have the football game in this bowl right here. And the players doing their part in the start of the first quarter. Well, everybody has dwelt on the fact that Iowa State is 22 years removed. Pittsburgh has not won a bowl game since 1982. So in both cases, you're absolutely right. Great opportunity. A lot of human interest in this contest, Steve. And we're off to the good 7-7 start. And the Cyclones will put it in the air. And Pittsburgh will get another possession. The first one worked out pretty well. Rod Rutherford is slammed down hard. And you can tell clearly there are more Iowa State fans here than there are Pittsburgh fans. As you see Rosenfels getting some attention on the sideline, getting attention on the phone and the other foot. See, Rod Rutherford is the third string quarterback who came in there to return that kickoff. As soon as you step back, that's a bad thing because that means that you don't have any momentum. And the result is now that Pittsburgh has bad field position having to start inside their 20. First and 10. 442 to play here in the first, tied at seven. And flags fly as well. Looked like Kiawatha Downey, the right tackle, might have moved, drawing the Iowa State defense offside. Get the official word. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, still first down. 
We've got a triple header of college football for you as Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow. The early game has Colorado State against Louisville. That'll be followed by LSU and Georgia Tech, and then the nightcap Texas and Oregon. A triple header for you. What else would you expect during Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2? Hand off off the pitch to the right side, and it's Barlow again. And he barely gets back to the original line of scrimmage after the penalty. Kevin Durandi made the tackle. But the one good thing about that run, Steve, is in the complaints of the coaches for Barlow throughout the season is he tiptoed a little bit. He was trying to pick his hole. At 6'1", 235 pounds, and the guy that supposedly runs the 40 and 455, they wanted him to go north and south. Over the last half of the season, that's exactly what he did, particularly in the last game of the season against West Virginia when he totaled 272 yards. Brings up a second down and 10 now. Got the penalty yardage back. Running for his life is Terman, and the pass is incomplete as Terman was being flattened. Down to the field, here's Dave Ryan. Steve, looks like good news for Iowa State. Sainz Rosenfels has just cramps in his right calf. The trainers are trying to make sure he's all right. It's only before the game, a lot of hydrating with the players. It's not hot down here with a roof open. It's pretty cool, but apparently Rosenfels okay to go back in the game. Bad news, though, for Michael Wagner, the backup running back for Iowa State. Sprained ankle, he's out for the game. Wow. All right, Dave, thanks. They talk, you talked about the depth Iowa State has in the backfield. We'll see some of that on display then tonight. Something else tough to gauge, too, is the excitement factor of players just getting into the game early on. That's when the injuries occur. Third down and ten. Low setback is polite. And that short dump off pass across the middle is complete. But not for a first down. Lamar Slade comes up short on the catch. Chief, a veteran quarterback like John Terman should not be hearing footsteps. But over the last couple of plays, he has been a little bit tentative because he's had people in his face. Remember, they had the outside backer blitz, had a couple of things go wrong. And the result there is he did not look downfield at all, Steve. Content to dump it off. And the result is they did not get the first down. They're going to have to give it up. Andy Lee, true freshman punter, is set to kick it away. J.J. Moses, the dangerous one, is back at his 35. Now they drop somebody else back. Well, two players now back to return this punt if necessary. And they'll both allow it to bounce. And it's picked up by Adam Runk, who dropped back to help Moses out on the punt return. But we told you, Dan McCartney starting as many seniors as possible in this game. Here's what that class means to him. They've done it with passion. They've done it with class. Uh, they've been tremendous representatives off the field for us. And uh, I've really, uh, in a lot of ways, have mixed feelings about this because uh, I never, I, I dreamed of the day we could all be together at a bowl game and have a chance to win it. I also dreaded the day I'd ever have to say goodbye. McCartney said last night he would talk to his seniors and say, hey, even if by chance we lose this game, that should not take away from the accomplishment of just being the first Iowa State team to get to a bowl in 22 years. Steve, 25 seniors on the roster, 16 starting today. Okay. And, of course, you know, when you are a head coach, you appreciate the fact that these guys stick that out. And, of course, when we say st seniors, Steve, we talk about a lot of them that are redshirted. So that's five years that they've been a part of the program. And you can see the streaks that have ended under Dan McCartney and those said seniors. The road game, the conference road losing streak, first bowl appearance, their first winning season, all those things have come to fruition as a result of that particular group he may mention. His delay of game penalty against Iowa State. Steve, it was actually it was actually number nine for Iowa State. Adam Runk actually had kind of a fair catch then changed his mind and picked it up on the bounce. That's the reason. And he was the player that dropped back late with Moses right. trying to help out on returning that. Punt. Out of the shotgun here's Rosenfels. Plenty of time. That great offensive line. Now firing and completing. And a nice grab there by Craig Campbell. That was a nice catch. That looked a little bit low. I wasn't sure that he didn't scoop that one, but none of the officials, usually the umpire, comes screaming up to say, no, 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 the ball hit the ground. But evidently he came up with it. Great job by Rosenfels to buy time and buy time. He was back there a good five seconds, which enabled Campbell to get open. Gain of 12 on the play. Pretty good offensive showdown to start this football game. Has come up on two and a half to play in the first quarter. 
shifting. Now they're set. Rosenfeld will fake it and hand off on the reverse to Moses. And the spin move by Moses gets him out to the 49-yard line. We, we keep talking about his height or lack of, but he doesn't seem to get hit. But let me tell you something. This is a huge play by Ramon Walker. Everybody is going in the wrong direction. Now watch as he comes around. All the white shirts are coming this direction. Here he comes. Now it looks for all intents and purposes like he should make a big play. Ramon Walker squares up, takes the move, trips him up. That is a huge play. If he doesn't drop him right there, he might still be running. Walker already has four tackles on the football game. Brings up a second down and five. They go four wide receiver set here. Haywood, the lone setback. Rosenfeld has him set. Now drops back, looking left, and throwing man wide open. It's complete to Lane Danielson, who found a seam in the zone. Walker had to bring him down, but not until he had a gain of 22. The man that has to generate pass rush is Brian Knight, number 57, and thus far he has not been able to do it. This time it's Ennis Haywood that comes up, takes him on. That doesn't bode well for Pittsburgh. If a back can handle Knight, that's not a good thing. That's going to enable Rosenfeld to have a lot of time to survey downfield and beat those underneath zones of the Panthers. First and ten for the Cyclones. Looking to put back-to-back -to -back scores together after Pittsburgh open up a 7-0 lead. They just get the playoff. Here's Rosenfeld trying to buy himself some time. Lost one and just too high. Moses, the intended receiver there. Well, again, we, we keep dwelling on the, uh, the vertically challenged young man <laughs> named Moses. And certainly here's an issue here where maybe being 5'8 or 5'9 could have paid off. Instead, that's the best that he could do. Great effort, though, by number 32, who opted to take the same number as his father, Jerry, a running back for the Iowa State Hawkeyes in the early 70s. We asked Moses yesterday if, if he'd like to be any height. What height would he like to be? And he said, nope, I like it just the way I am at 5'7". Had a very ecclesiastical answer. He said, this is what God intended. I was impressed by that. Here's Rosenfels. Off the handoff, the draw play to... Haywood, Daryl McMurray brings him down. Once again, is Dave Ryan. Well, guys, a little bit more on J.J. Moses and his dad, Jerry, as Todd mentioned. A great high school athlete in the state of Iowa. In fact, he is thought to be the best high school athlete ever to come out of that state, recruited by over 100 schools. Now, Jerry played in Ames in the early 70s, but injuries limited his career to just a couple games. He couldn't even make the trip to the 1972 Liberty Bowl because he was hurt. He's here now, though, in the stand somewhere. We'll find him later tonight. J.J. tells us he wants to write a final winning chapter for number 32, just like his dad wore to Iowa State. All right, Dave, certainly a touching story there. One of the many reasons you can root for Iowa State is Rosenfels takes off and dives ahead for the first down. Sage Rosenfels, he doesn't want to be called a running quarterback. He did have 10 rushing touchdowns this season, the most for an Iowa State quarterback since Dave Hopman did in 1962. Well, certainly at this point of the game, Sage is the rage as he comes outside, and what happens, Steve, is it happens so often. You're downfield a man-for-man -man coverage. You have your back turned, and once he breaks the contain of the Pittsburgh defense, he's able to get the first down easily on the run. Quite possibly the final play of this first quarter. From, that's right, bank one ball play. No sign of Randy Johnson. Just a lot of Sage Rosenfeld so far. He hands it off to the first man through. And that's Haywood, the star running back for Iowa State. And that will do it. On a history-making night here in Phoenix, the first quarter comes to an end. Sage Rosenfels and Iowa State coming right back after Pittsburgh gets scored on a 72-yard bomb. Along with Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan, Steve Levy, as we open up quarter number two, the Insight.com Bowl tied at seven. Three receivers to the left of Sage Rosenfels. And a quick hitter to J.J. Moses, who tries to cut it up, and he's very close to another first down. Of course, this is an Iowa State offense 
that is working against a Pittsburgh defense led by Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, who the previous five years was an assistant at Iowa State. So that was a big discussion all week, Todd. How much of a factor would that be? Hey, he knows everything about them. Well, up to this point, it hasn't been an issue, and you saw Dan McCarney. He said that that was one of the most difficult goodbyes he had had in giving up that young man. But, of course, in the coaching fraternity, you want to move you up. You want to get to be a coordinator. Thus far, Rhodes is struggling in this game. Iowa State seems to be plugging all the right buttons. Third down and two. Four receivers in for Iowa State. Pittsburgh brings a nickel defense. Now they show blitz. Rhodes themselves under pressure. Got it away. And it's caught. Shy of the goal line. Down to the one is Lane Danielson. They had the good pressure. They brought an extra player, but Mike White had the good rush. It appeared that Rosenfeld audibled off on that play. Comes to his left on the slant. He's able to beat it with a three-step drop. Beat that blitz and put the ball right on the money. I'll tell you what, you know, for somebody who is inaccurate, I'm beginning to believe all that hype about him as a as somebody who is 8 for 12, 105 yards and a touchdown up until this point. Some scouting combines, he'd had him ahead of prominent players like Josh Heupel and Chris Winkie. This is first and goal now, handed off to the first man through, and it's Joe Woodley, touchdown for Iowa State. After trailing seven to nothing, the Cyclones are an extra point away from going up 14-7. And Steve, you, you had a shot there of Paul Rhodes. Clearly, the defense is discombobulated. They're on their heels. The onus falls on the offense for the Panthers now to get something going. I don't think at this point they can come out and go three and out. Pittsburgh's got to get up the field a little bit. Here's Gomez again on for the extra point. And that's not going to work out. So they botched the extra point. Steve Corey Hannon is the one who's doing the snapping, but I'm not sure that that I'm not sure that that was that bad of a snap. You say bad snap, but the guy, you know, I, I thought maybe he needed to come up with this one. Let's see the catch. No, that's right through his hands. That's right there. That has that has to be on the young man in this case, which is Casey Baldwin. Dave, down to you. All right, Stephen Todd, thanks. Joined by a very special guest, Eric Brown, is the co-CEO of Insight.com. He must be very pleased with the move from Tucson to Phoenix with this huge crowd at the Bob here tonight. Oh, it's exciting. This venue is like college foot like football like you've never seen it before. It's amazing. Now, you've got a lot of your friends here, very close friends. Tell us about how many of your uh, employees are here tonight. Actually, we have 4,000 of our employees, their friends and family, all taking up one side of the stands here. Is the game in Phoenix to stay? Does this appear to be the permanent home of the Inside.com Bowl? I hope so. This has been wonderful. We hope to keep it going and growing here in Phoenix. Thanks a lot for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. Guys? All right, Dave, thanks. Of course, City of Phoenix hosting another rather large bowl game as well. Uh, New Year's Day night, the Fiesta Ball. This city is football crazy right now as Mike McKnight puts it in the air and Tory Cox will look to return the kick and try to give Pittsburgh a spark, but instead it's Iowa State that will get the spark after the big special teams hit by Justin Eilers. Speaking of that other football game in the area, it's actually in... Tempe, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Oregon State, Notre Dame. You can see it New Year's Day at 8.30 Eastern on 5.30 Pacific. Of course, you'll be able to see that on ABC. And by the way, Todd, feel free to turn down your sound and <laughs> listen to ESPN Radio. That's terrible. The mellifluous voices of Steve Levy and Todd Christensen. Along we, with Dave Ryan. We will have the call for you on ESPN Radio. <laughs> You can see it on ABC. Big run there by Barlow, and that's just what Pittsburgh needed. Jamarcus Powers finally brought him down after the gain of 21. The second half of the season, Barlow really turned it on. I mentioned that staff at 272 yards against West Virginia. Steve, that's the second most in the history of Pitt, trailing only the 303 yards that a pretty good back by the name of Tony Dorsett was able to accrue against Notre Dame. You notice there once again, he's got his pads going straight ahead, using his 235 pounds. He really realizes that after the success he's had, Steve, he's got a shot at the next level. On first down and 10, three receivers to the left of John Turman. Here's Turman, good pass protection, now steps up. Little dump off to Barlow. Loose football, they say no. 
They say he was already down, and Pittsburgh will hang on to the ball. I've often wondered if the officials would gauge that by how quickly the, the, the player goes back to the ball. In this case, Barlow, when the ball dropped, he sprinted over as if, as if it could have been a fumble. Watch at the end here. He dumps the ball off. Does he have it right there? He's bobbling it. Oh, he doesn't have it. Good call by the official. But he sprints back and tries to get it. The official's right on top. But you know what, Steve? Up to this point, the official's done an excellent job. About three or four close calls. We remind you these are officials from the WAC conference. There you go. You talk about it. <laughs> the right. Big 12 takes on the Big East in this one. Turman on the draw. And it's Barlow keeping it on the ground. James Reed and Ab Turner made the stop. You mentioned Barlow and what he did against West Virginia's 272 yards. Also, really a credit to the offensive line. And there's the guy you're talking about, TD. I tell you what, boy, was he quick. You know, in, high, in college, he was only about 5'10". He's about 180. And everybody debated as to whether or not he could take the punishment. Obviously, he's done that and then some a member of both the collegiate and the professional football halls of fame. Third down and four now. Here's Turner. Quick drop and fires. And it's incomplete. Bryant hadn't gotten into his break yet. And the football was already delivered. You see the frustration on Bryant's part. Some sort of miscommunication between himself and Turman. And we pointed this out, Steve. This is not what Pittsburgh needed to do. I'm wondering if Walt Harris might consider a fake here because all the momentum at this point is the Hawkeyes and the defense for Pittsburgh hasn't shown any inclination to stop anybody. Andy Lee is back to punt from the 30-yard line. And J.J. Moses is back. And I'll get some help again from Adam Runk, who was back there with Moses. And Lee puts it in the air. Nice, high, spiraling kick. Nearly scraped the roof here at the Bank One ballpark. He's J.J. Moses spins out to the 20-yard line. 12-13 to go here in the first half. 13-7 in favor of Iowa State. The Insight.com Bowl coming here from Phoenix, Arizona. Iowa State on the ground again with Ennis Haywood. Iowa State had 72 and 63 yard touchdown drives to go up 13-7 after trailing early 7 to nothing. And Dan McCartney certainly has to like what he's seeing. He's grim and chewing on the gum, but he's got to like the fact that not only is Iowa State driving, that's their 26th play to Pitts, only 13. And now they have 174 yards to Pitts, 124. Carney's also got to be pleased. Got himself a new contract that'll run through 2004, averaging reported $600,000 per season. Rosenfeld steps up, now throws, and completes. And the Cyclones are looking wide open, like Chris Anthony right there. Torrey Cox finally got to him after the gain of 14. We'll see, again, here's part of the problem, and that is that Rosenfeld being as mobile as he is continues to buy time, and the secondary for Pittsburgh just cannot stay with the receivers. What's going to have to happen here, and this is the decision that Paul Rhodes' defensive coordinator has to make, do I blitz and try and get some pressure, or am I willing to stay back in some of the zones and let the guy pick you apart? Right now, either one has been a bad decision for the Panthers. First and ten after the big game. Two receivers to the right. Rosenfels gives it to Haywood on the ground, and he finds some running room and a crack. And he's out to the 46 and close to another one. Ramon Walker brought him down, and here's Dave. Well, guys, Insight.com Bowl officials tell me the roof is closed here for the rest of the game for a specific reason. After the parachuters came through for the opening ceremonies, they closed it back up. Last night, they had the women's basketball game. We talked about Tennessee, Arizona State. It got down to about 42 degrees, so for fan comfort, they want to have the roof closed and keep it around 60 degrees. The thing is, a lot of moisture on the grass will develop with that roof closed, guys. All right, Dave. Dave, thanks. We will watch for that. Passes completed again across the middle to Mike Banks, the tight end, and he is well into Pittsburgh territory, and the Cyclones all of a sudden are an offensive machine. Mike Banks, the 6'4", 250-pounder, had 27 catches on the season. And again, right now, something that's surprising is how dominant Iowa State has been up front. I would have thought that some of the Pitt athletes would have got in particularly night, but that has not occurred. 
as Pittsburgh helmets litter the field, and Iowa State continues to trudge up and down the gridiron. It's an Iowa State offense that averaged 424 yards per game this season, the fourth best in school history, and Hayward looks to add to that. Squirms his way out for a couple more. Gerald Hayes among the pit defenders. Well, Iowa State has been dominant in terms of their ability to run the football. So over the last four years, what they have done offensively at, as, as a team. Not to forget, Steve, that they've had four runners here in the last six years that led the Big 12 in rushing. And you see that when you rush for 200 yards or more, your offense is clicking. Davis has been an awful big name in that Iowa State backfield. And now it's Hayward running the show as Rosenfeld drops back and throws and completes again to a wide open receiver that time it just happened to be jj moses ryan gonzalez just touched him down to the ground now on the other side of the ball where you see john Terman with a little bit of happy feet sliding back and forth you can see rosenfeld is extremely comfortable extremely comfortable back there as he has plenty of time to survey the field you're going to see the corner route come out here now watch so the quarterback as he fades back watch the troubles that he has or the troubles that he does not have Nobody is in his face. Plenty of time. He's able to plant his feet and deliver the ball right on the money. From the shotgun, inside handoff. And it's Haywood. Nothing doing there. Pittsburgh could use more of that. It's a Pittsburgh defense that was the third best in the Big East. That's a conference. Has some pretty good offensive teams. But the defense really struggling here and, against Iowa State. And the other thing that's surprising here is Paul Rhodes' group yielded less than 100 yards per game running the football. But clearly this is an at least at this point, Steve, would appear that this is an Iowa State group that they really underestimated. The number 17 rush defense in the nation coming in. Second and 10. Moses has four catches for 55 yards. He's the man in motion, tiptoeing to the line. And here's Rosenfeld, slipped out and still completes the pass to Haywood out of the backfield. And he's inside the five. Sage Rosenfeld's getting it done. And maybe Dave talked about the moisture on the field. Slips down. Now, here's an interesting point here, Steve. It appeared to me, was he able to keep his balance? I saw the referee step up and to see whether or not he'd actually hit the ground. Does his knee go down? Now, watch him slip and fall. Is his butt down? No, it isn't. Great job by the official not to call that. It appeared that his knee might have been down. He holds himself up by the hand, able to deliver the ball on the money. Rosenfels, everything is going his way tonight. Threatening for another touchdown is Iowa State. He's hit six passes in a row, and that time before his backside hit the grass. Hands off. Haywood, touchdown, and Iowa State makes it look easy. Steve, with eight minutes remaining in the first half, you don't want to be a doomsayer. But when you go in standing up inside that close to the goal line, that's a bad sign for the defense of Pittsburgh. Paul Rhodes has to regroup and do something here with his charges. Certainly, he's familiar with that Iowa State offense, but you just have to give them credit. Steve Loney and his staff, they are executing as well as they have all year long. The extra point up coming for Carl Gomez. They had a problem with the hold the last time, missed the extra point. We'll watch it again. The snap fine, the hold fine that time, and Carl Gomez boots it through. Pittsburgh had a 7-0 lead, and since then, Iowa State has had three possessions, and they've scored touchdowns on all of them. exclusive presentation of the 2000 insight.com bowl is presented by the arizona office of tourism and in part by dodge and nearly 3,000 dealers who invite you to come see what's different 20 unanswered points by iowa state and pittsburgh will get the ball back mike mcknight Short kickoff to Corey Cox. Cox finds a little bit of running room, and he's out to the 28-yard line. Down to the field once again. Here's Dave. 
All right, Steve, thanks a lot. Very special cheerleader for John Terman. It's his sister, Jamie, who's an Oakland Raiderette cheerleader. It's got to be a great opportunity to cheer for your brother. Have you ever done that before? I've never cheered for my brother before. Um, in Pop Warner, of course, I cheered and he played, but I was a couple, you know, a couple grades ahead of him. So it, it's never really been like this between us. What kind of things uh, have you talked about in the last couple days? Was John nervous about this game and have you been able to, to give you know him some what? emotional support? We're, um, my whole family, including myself and all of his friends are out here. We're so excited to be here that I haven't really, all I told him, you know, we called him on the plane and said, hey, Johnny, I had all the girls wish him good luck. Just go in there and have fun and, you know, play your heart out. Can the Raiderettes help Pittsburgh get a win tonight? What was that? I'm sorry. Can you guys help Pittsburgh get a win? Of course. That's why we're here. Thanks so much. All right, Dave. That would appear to be an unfair advantage, I think, for Pittsburgh having the Raider extra cheering for the Panthers. Well, they needed, John needed his sister's help or something on that one. He had Latif Grimm to the post all by himself and completely overthrew it, had plenty of time. Sherman's having a difficult time getting in rhythm, Stephen. Don't forget, Walt Harris said he wouldn't be, he wouldn't object to replacing him if he continues to struggle with Priestley. Here's Terman trying to dump it off and does to Kevin Barlow, who slips down. We'll watch again for the moisture on this real grass with the roof now closed that Dave talked about earlier. And as you get a chance to see, you'll see the screen set up. Barlow has an awful lot of room coming his way. Watch right here. Watch the red shirts are going to be downfield because they're anticipating the throw. Here the thing develops. Now watch. Look at all the grass. Now you got two guys out in front of him. He doesn't slip down. Look at all the grass that he has, the people coming late. It could have been a big play for the Panthers. Did you uh, recognize any of those Raiderettes from your playing days, Tom? That was a long time ago, my friend. <laughs> I wanted you to say that instead of me. That's great. Third down and eight. Here's Terman getting some pressure from the outside. Terman. He is run down from behind. It's Kevin Durandi who brought him down. He had the time and he stepped up, but it just was not enough. Good coverage in the secondary by Iowa State, and once again, Pittsburgh forced a punt. You mentioned Walt Harris, and last year, they went to two quarterbacks an awful lot with Priestley and Terman. We asked him, he said he'd really like Terman to finish this game, but as you point out, he said, like in baseball, what's the problem with having a relief sure. pitcher? Everyone in football is so focused on having the starting quarterback name your number one guy, and Harris does not believe in that, as Andy Lee is set to punt. Nice kick, a nice high spiraling kick. J.J. Moses. Moses is taken down. Nice, nice special teams tackle there for Pittsburgh. Rob Butler is the one reserve receiver who comes down and makes the play. A flag is down. Again, Steve, one of the things that surprised me on that last series for Pittsburgh, coming into this game, Iowa State has been yielding 196 rushing yards per game. I really thought that what you needed to do here is give Barlow the opportunity, you know, to, to ride his back a little bit. And, and, you know, they were doing that the series before. And, of course, Terman is struggling at this point, three for seven. Of course, he has 80 yards, but 72 of that was on that big play to Bryan. And, of course, after that nice punt, certainly Iowa State is going to move him back and make him do it again. Illegal formation on the kicking team. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay fourth down. See, this is where, as a punter, you go nuts. I turned that one over. That was a 47-yard punt. Just a three-yard return as you see Pittsburgh trying to get it together on their sideline. And this could not have started out any better for Pittsburgh. The big sure. play, their superstar player making it a 7-0 lead, feeling good about themselves. And then all of a sudden, across Iowa State has counted with three consecutive touchdowns. Interesting, though, that Dan McCartney pointed out that he said, you know, we're used to coming from behind. I asked him if that were to happen in the game. Remember, I said, what if Pittsburgh gets off early? He says, we're very patient. We understand that it's a 60-minute game, and that's exactly what's happened here. Iowa State has recovered nicely. So Andy Lee will try it again. The backup earlier in the season, he good. shanks this one. Wow, what a break for Iowa State. Instead of a 47-yard punt, it's a 14-yard punt. And so the Cyclones will take over with great field position and a 13-point lead. 
that was really a costly flag against Pittsburgh. Iowa State would have been starting at their own 24-yard line. Instead, they're starting at the 40-yard line of the Panthers. Cost them some 35 yards. The Cyclones looking for more already with a 20 to 7 lead as we come up on six minutes left. It's Haywood carrying the football and then being slammed back down to the turf, back to the 45. The first ever bowl appearance for Iowa State and it's Johnny Majors. He was the head coach of the Cyclones, their first bowl bids in the 71 Sun Bowl and then to the 72 Liberty Bowl. And then you see a couple more bowl games, 77 Peach and the 78 Hall of Fame Bowl, and none of them successful. They've never won a bowl game in their history, and ironically, Johnny Majors was the head coach at Pittsburgh in their national title run in 76, and now serves as a special assistant. That pass again, wide open across the middle is Chris Anthony. Walker brings him down. And Rosenfeld's not had, not only has so much time, but he could choose any receiver he wants. Well, take a look at the middle of the field, Steve. Here's the problem. For whatever reason, they're not they're not handling the middle of the field. Watch right here and watch the ball thrown and watch the white shirt scatter and watch the hook in the middle of the field. Look at this. Where is everybody? Hello? Nobody there. And the result is an easy completion. First down for Iowa State. Maybe paying too much attention to J.J. Moses, but it must be something. I believe Anthony so wide open across the middle. Here's Ennis Haywood carrying the football down to the 21-yard line. Five minutes to play in this first half. Pittsburgh got off to the great start, and then since then it's been dominated by the Cyclones. Do you get the sense, Stephen, I know that it's still early. We have 4.49 and the clock running here in the first half. But for whatever reason, I get the, the sense here that the game's more important to Iowa State. You know, the nine wins, the senior class, first bowl game 22 years, first chance since 1906, blah, blah, blah. All of those things seem to be more of a motivating factor than Pitt getting their eighth win. I would agree. You get the sense from talking to some of their fans who have made the trip as well. What a big deal this is, especially back in Ames. That pass out in the flat is complete to Moses. He is cut down out of bounds by Gary Ursler of Pittsburgh. Let's go down to the field. Here's Dave. This guy particularly excited, Steve, about that last catch. J.J. Moses, his dad, Jerry. We talked about your legendary high school career and into Iowa State where you were hurt a lot, unfortunately. You didn't get to go to that bowl game in 1972 with the Cyclones. What has it meant for the family to have J.J. come back here after 22 years of those Cyclone Bowls? Boy, it kind of fulfills an opportunity and a dream of mine all along to be able to go to a bowl. I'm right down here on the sideline, but I'm just watching my son play now, and that's really awesome. I'm really proud of him. What kind of advice have you had for him throughout his high school and now college career? He's one of the shorter guys out there, but uh, as we've seen tonight, very electrifying. Well, just work hard, set goals, focus on them, and let's just go get them. And that's what he's done, and I'm really proud of that. Is Iowa State back on the football map? You helped rebuild the program back in the early 70s, and now Dan McCartney's done it again. Dan's done an excellent job. Uh, he's recruited some top-notch athletes to play, and they're producing, and really fine young gentlemen, too, along with Cy being an uh, uh, excellent football player. So, absolutely, he's done a heck of a job. Chris Anthony just scored. And it's Anthony <laughs> turning the corner. A thanks to Jerry Moses for the assist on the play-by-play -play for the touchdown for Iowa State. Well, Sean Robinson just gave way too much room, but again, Rosenfels is just doing it exactly right. He throws the ball to the outside, allows him the chance to cut to the outside with the ball. Robinson's just too far off. I mean, when you're that close to the end zone, Steve, you got to be up in a receiver's face. Anthony had just one touchdown during the regular season. He's got two tonight here in the bowl game. It's a nine-yard touchdown pass, and here's Gomez on for the extra point. And that is up. That is good. Another souvenir for the crowd. And Iowa State, they're on fire on the field and in the stands. Rosenfels is at nine in a row. Welcome back. We point out, just prior to our game here on ESPN, West Virginia had themselves a 49-9 to lead in what looked like a blowout and wound up having to hang on for Don Nealon and a chance to go out a winner. So... Won't be fooled by this 27 to 7 score. With three and a half to play in the first half. Tory Cox from the five for Pittsburgh. And he is out to the 25 yard line. 
And again, it will be John Terman taking the field at quarterback for the Panthers. Back to the studio once again. Here's Chris. Okay, Steve, coming up at halftime, we'll update the situation down at the Sugar Bowl. The Hurricanes and the Gators scuffling on Bourbon Street, if you haven't heard. Michael Vick waffling just a bit about his plans for next year, and we'll check the conference scorecard as bowl season approaches the midway point. Rod Gilmore joins me at the half. Guys? Chris, thanks. We look forward to that. Three minutes and 13 seconds from now. Two receivers to the right. Here's Terman. They'll try the ground game, and it's Kevin Barlow. Barlow trying to turn it up. Was held up momentarily, and now is brought down by a host of red jerseys out at the 35. Adam Runk leading the way. Nice balance as he balances on that left leg. It appeared to be about a two-yard gain, and he's able to slip out of the grass for the defender. Get about five or six. Mentioned they got guys playing for their future and future status. Mel Kuyper Jr. had Barlow ranked as the third best running back potential in the NFL draft behind only Deuce McAllister and LaDainian Tomlinson. Something to watch for. On second down and four, Barlow again. Cuts it up before making it to the corner. And should have the first down with that dive ahead. Nigel Thorpe brought him down. That does a nice job there of being patient, waiting for his blocks to develop before he cuts up. I think he's just going to be a little bit short. But I like what I see of number 43. And frankly, except for the one long pass to Bryant, he has been the offense for Pittsburgh. In direct contrast to Iowa State, Pittsburgh had a touchdown on their first possession. They've punted the last three times. Iowa State didn't score on their first possession. Now they've got touchdowns on four consecutive opportunities with the ball. Determined to keep it himself. Now this is where Pittsburgh, now they do have the first down. They're going to have to huddle up, Steve, and now inside of two minutes. They're going to have to throw the ball downfield. And Terman, as we pointed out, has struggled up to this point. He needs to generate something here in this drive so the Pittsburgh can have at least a little momentum heading into halftime. Terman, the number seven ranked in pass efficiency in the nation coming into play in this one. So far, three of seven for 80 yards. And, of course, the 72 yards coming on the big play score. Is it just me? There's a minute and a half left. They're acting like they've got plenty of time. They come out in the I formation. Turning off play action, rolling his left and throwing. The intended receiver is Chris Wilson, wide open, and he's across midfield. And beyond the touchdown pass to Bryant, one of their few big games in the first half, that for 23. But this is what the running game does, Steve, is that after you run and you run well, then you can go with the play action and fool some people. That's exactly what happened. Bryant ran the secondary off. Wilson able to find a first down underneath. But now they didn't give him the out of bounds, so the clock now has started again. And as I say, Pittsburgh not operating expeditiously. Three times in the last four years, the Pittsburgh offense has been number one in passing in the Big East. They're going to get that going here. I think Bryant left early, and the flag goes. I think Antonio Bryant jumped the snap just a bit. Appeared also that Mark Brown might have been in a bit of a hurry to get back and pass block. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yards. And we'll never Still find out down. for sure which is nice in college football. They don't pin it on a particular player like they do in the NFL. Well, the Iowa State pass defense has not exactly been tremendous. You can see the pass yards allowed, about 210, 51st in the NCAA rank, and I'm sure that coming into this game, the Pittsburgh offensive people are licking their chops. But it's tough to do that when Iowa State dominates and has the ball the whole time, scores on four straight possessions. You send Barlow out in motion to the flanker spot. Here's Terman stepping up and firing. It's Bryant, Antonio Bryant. Just his second catch of the football game. After making the big touchdown play for 72 yards, Jamarcus Powers brought him down. Timeout, Pittsburgh. We'll come back for the final half minute of this first half. Welcome back. Final 30 seconds of this first half before we turn it over to Chris Fowler and Rodney Gilmore. 27 to 7, Iowa State manhandling the Panthers to this point after Pittsburgh scored first. And now Pittsburgh on second and three. Took their time moving down the field. Now they choose to use a timeout and see what kind of play they come back with after that. 
determined. A straight drop. Got pressure up the middle on his back foot. Throws and completes to Lamar Slade, and they get out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock with 24 seconds left. Slade does a nice job getting out of bounds. That shows the arm strength of Terman. He was moving back against it, gets up in the air and delivers the ball. Slade does a nice job of getting out of bounds, buying some time. But Steve Ray really did waste some time here in the last couple of plays. You know, this should, the clock should be right at around 50 seconds. Instead here, they're gonna have a, they're gonna have a hard time here getting anything except possibly a field goal attempt. Terman three for three on this drive. Make it four for four on the short completion. It's Slade again, and again he gets out of bounds. With 18 seconds left, gain of 11 on that play. Take a look at the attention that they're paying to Bryant. They're just not going to give up. Watch to the left side. Bryant's going to come up the field here. Now take a look at the red shirts and what happens with them and Slade underneath. Take a look. All the red shirts go with him, and Slade is right here wide open. That's what happens when you have a great player. Everybody follows Brian and says, I tell you what, you're going to beat us, but you're not going to beat us again with number 80. Again, Brian just two catches so far in this first half, which is 18 seconds left in it. Here's Turbin. Looking to go five for five on this drive, unless he runs, and he does. And he's taken down from behind at the nine-yard line, and they'll use a timeout. Pittsburgh with one timeout remaining. 11 seconds to play in the first half. Pittsburgh trying to go into the locker room on a high note. Time ever, the Insight.com Bowl be played in Phoenix. First football game ever played in here at the Bank One Ballpark. 11 seconds left in the first half. Pittsburgh has the ball. Well, the second down and six. They can still get a first down without scoring, but time remaining, 11 seconds. Steve, they've got Bryant by himself at the, at the top. That might be where they're looking. Turner, though, looking left, never even gave Bryant a glance. It's Slade in the middle of the field. He fumbled, Steve. He fumbled. With two seconds remaining on the clock, he fumbled. We wait for the official indication. With two seconds left in the first half. Now, if he didn't fumble, then Pittsburgh better be quick to call a timeout. Still waiting for the official indication. He was able to come up yeah, with it. The Pittsburgh and Walt Harris Slade knows that. It. They got to call timeout. And they were smart to do that because that clock... They were smart to do that. Now they've got to kick the field goal. Walt Time. Harris was aware of that. Pittsburgh. Take a look at Slade on Final the slant. Timeout. They're anticipating that he's going to be able to break a couple of tackles and get in. But right there, he stood up. There's the ball. You can see it pop out. And I'm surprised. It appeared, it appeared that the man that, was, the man that was able to get the ball was number 46. That was Matt Word. But instead, instead, in the midst of the pile, watch the ball come out. There it is right there. Looks like Word has it, but then there's a scramble from the backside. And the result is Slade's able to come up with the ball. And fortunately for Pittsburgh now, even though they wanted to get in the end zone, field goal should go a long way to at least giving them a little momentum, Steve. Two seconds away from the Dodge Different Halftime Report with Chris and Rodney. Michael Vick, is he thinking about the NFL again? Why? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll tune in to Chris and Rodney. Sugar Bowl Blues, a little brouhaha going down in New Orleans, and the Conference Bowl scorecard, that's all coming up on the Dodge different halftime report. Todd, they're going to take attempt the field goal. Is there any decision here? Is there any, even an outside thought about maybe throwing no. one in the end zone? No. Down 20? No, I don't think so. Going to the locker No, room. I think okay. because if you fail and you're down 20 going into yeah. the locker room, you want to, you know what, and, and you have to say to yourself, look, we're down 17, not a good thing going into halftime, but certainly we can score that many points in the second half, and our defense can't play any worse than it did in the first half. Dave, quickly down to you. Guys, we saw the harsh words of Antonio Bryant, John Terman, and head coach Wal Harris. A moment ago, Bryant was screaming, you should have thrown the fade to me. Terman said, go sit down. It wasn't a play called. Wal Harris trying to calm him down as well. But emotions getting a lot of control here on the pit sideline. All right, Dave, thanks. Todd, that was the play you were looking for as they had set up. I, I, I thought that's exactly what they had when they had the three receivers to the one side. Bryant isolated. I thought that's what you're going to do, throw a jump ball to your best guy. But they didn't do it. The delay was to add three seconds back on the clock. So now five seconds. Nick Lotz is on to attempt a 23-yard field goal to make this one a little closer, heading for the locker room at halftime. Somebody got a piece of it, Steve. No good. No good. 
and it remains 27 to 7. They take the final second off the clock. Jonathan Sitter is the snapper, and it looked like it was just a little bit off. Tim Stein couldn't get the ball down, and the result is his penetration by Iowa State gets a little piece of it. The snap's a little off. Now watch. You can see right there, just knuckles, knuckles to the right. It appeared that it might have been Matt Word. Here's the snap. Look at this. A little bit off. He's got to hustle back and get it. That affords the rush to get a chance to get a piece of the ball. Pittsburgh scored first. Iowa State four touchdowns in a row after that. The Dodge different halftime report with Kristen Rodney. Guys. The roof was open at the start. It has been closed here at the Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix. Iowa State owning Pittsburgh in the first half, 27 to 7. As we welcome you back inside the Insight.com Ball. Steve Levy alongside Todd Christensen. Thoughts from Dave Ryan in just a bit. So much on the line for Iowa State. They've never, ever won a bowl game. And yes, this is during their first appearance in bowl action in 22 years. And everything went right outside of maybe that first drive by Pittsburgh. Well, that's right. Except for the bomb, Pittsburgh has just been very anemic offensively, and particularly on the defensive. They just haven't been able to do anything at all. Sage Rosenfeld has had his way. 15 of 19 for 192 yards and two touchdowns. Antonio Bryan had the big play. He's by far, not even close, the marquee star in this game. Caught the 72-yard bomb, but after that, he has just one short game catch. Really has struggled. you got to give credit to Jamarcus Powers, number eight, who has been on him on a number of, number of situations. You saw right here early on, they had him up on top and then underneath. There, there he is. There's the one time where Bryant was able to split the defenders and go the distance. But as you pointed out, Steve, that's the only time. Right with him there, pushes him out of bounds, shows that he's physical. There he is. He plants and comes back, and that's the short pass that he caught. Those are the only two balls that he was able to catch here in the first half. That has to be considered a surprise. Certainly some of the other numbers that stand out from the first half, Todd. Well, of course, of course, you're looking at the total yards. The thing that, surpri that surprises me here, right here, is the passing yardage. I would have anticipated that a guy who's been a 53% completion guy on the year would have, in the first stanza, been 15 of 19. And Rosenfeld's completed his last nine passes in a row to finish out that first half. Just about set. Pittsburgh will get the football to open up the second half as Mike McKnight puts it in the air. Another short kickoff, and Torrey Cox takes it from the 12 for the Panthers. And Cox trying to run over some people. He's got it out to the 26, and they'll start in relatively good field position. Down to the field, here's Dave Ryan. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. Just talked with Walt Harris, the Pittsburgh coach, a few moments ago in the halftime locker room. He says his team is very confident, not too glum in that locker room now. They feel they can make a comeback. He's most worried about defensive positioning in the secondary. He feels really Sage Rosenfels had the big day. As Todd mentioned, 15 and 19. Coach Harris amazed by that because his defensive backs were out of position. They feel confident they can make a good adjustment at halftime and have a much better second half against Rosenfels in the Iowa State offensive attack. Dave, thank you. We'll watch for that. Two receivers open, bottom of your screen. And they open with John Turman back at quarterback, and he gives it to Kevin Barlow, their star running back. And Barlow is after the 35. It'll bring up a second and short. It's a great, it's a great job of blocking by their guard in that situation, number 64. Excuse me, that was the center, Chad Reed. He actually comes back, just kind of a backflip to get somebody who is penetrating, enabling Barlow to cut up field and get those eight yards. Reed got his first start this season, Todd, in that finale against West Virginia, the same game. Pittsburgh rushed for the 275 yards, and Barlow is averaging 7.1 yards per carry. So on second and two, what else to do but give it to him? And he should have enough for the first down. Dave, back to you. All right, Stephen. Talking with Iowa State coach Dan McCartney, he was thrilled with how well his offensive line played in the first half. He couldn't believe how much time Sage Rosenfels had to pass. It's the reason they had so much success. He thinks the big key in the second half is old T.O.P. Time of possession. If they can dominate the clock, they'll be all right in this game. Now, he told me also in his locker room, no one better be celebrating. Or I'm going to kick him off this team. There's a long way to go before Iowa State gets their first bowl win in 22 years. All right, Dave. Thanks. And talk about the pass protection against the Pittsburgh defense that had 35 sacks this season to lead the Big East. But now Pittsburgh's on offense. They go off the delayed handoff to Barlow. 
And he is just shy of the 45 to the 44. They bring up a second down. Of course, you're at home saying to yourself, I don't get it. If they're down 20 points, how come they're not with the three and four wide receivers and getting it up the field? But as we pointed out, this does set up the pass. And at this point, frankly, Steve Barlow has been the most effective weapon for Pittsburgh. But at some point here, Terman needs to get his rhythm. Barlow, one of just two Pittsburgh players that played in their last bowl appearance in 97. They were blown out. He had 68 yards. He was the top rusher on nine carries. And Barlow trying to turn the corner, slips down. And he is taken down there at the 43. Derek Walker helped him slip down to the grass. Derek Walker is able to penetrate and make him go outside of where he wanted to go. And that screws up the rhythm of what Pittsburgh was doing here in their first two carries of these two series. They've been able to get close to the first down. Now third and a little bit longer. I think they're going to have to throw it. Walker, speaking of throwing, it was a backup quarterback last season. He's fifth on the team in tackles this season. So third down and five. We see what the Panthers have done so far this evening. They send Slade in motion. And here's Terman to throw. With plenty of time, steps up, has some running room, and dives ahead and should have enough for the first down. Snuck underneath Matt Word for a six-yard game. Steve, they're very conscious of Antonio Bryant now. Jamarcus Powers had him in a zone, lets him go to the inside. They had people waiting on him. And Terman, when he looked to his right, came back to the left, saw that Bryant was covered, was able to take off. Good protection of the part of the front line for Pittsburgh, enabling Terman to run downfield and get that first down. Bryant certainly not satisfied with his numbers and talking to him yesterday he said man we drove by the fiesta bowl i want to be a part of that <laughs> a big right. bowl fiesta bowl not that i'm unhappy about being in the insight.com he was very gracious to point out very happy to be playing an a ball game but he certainly wants bigger and better at the break into that bcs and Terman sees something he does not like and is forced to burn a timeout with 11:53 left in the third pittsburgh is down 20 but they do have the ball ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Insight.com Bowl is presented by the Arizona Office of Tourism and in part by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome back. A couple of schools have started 4-0. Both won their final two games to get to the Insight.com Bowl. And Iowa State trying to win nine games in a season for the first time since 1906. As Barlow is the ball carrier, picks one hole, then chooses another. And he's across midfield of the 45 of the Cyclones. Reggie Hayward brought him down. David Ryan pointed out that with the roof closed that it might get a little bit slicker. I've noticed that Barlow has been slipping a couple of times here as he cuts to his left. It could be because he's cutting off the right foot, but either way, Here's, at the end of this drive, I'm thinking the number 43 might want to come back and take another look at some cleats. There he stumbles a little bit. You can see, obviously, a lot of that has to do with the Iowa State defenders, but the turf probably is getting a little moist. 12 carries, 71 yards. They get 13 carries and 73 yards for Barlow as he runs. Reggie Hayward to stop along with Ab Turner. Hayward is a guy worth mentioning. We talked about the big star Antonio Bryant on the Pittsburgh offense not performing well in the first half. Hayward's been rather quiet for Iowa State in terms of making the big play. Well, he certainly has, doesn't have to be noisy at all. You can see him right there, number 15. I tell you what, those are some of the biggest hands that I've ever seen, and I've been around some big hands people. I mean, I worked for Allstate one summer. Hey, but that's an old joke. No, no, Reggie Hayward. Boy, he's got some, he, he's got some claws out there. Third down and three. And Hayward was trying to make a big play, and maybe he jumped there. Well, he knew he was isolated. You know, he, he knew he was on the camera, so he wanted to take off. Dead ball. Illegal snap on the offense. Wow. Five yards. He didn't jump. Still third down. He was drawn off. We'll take, a look at the, take a look at the center here, Chad Reed. Yep, good call. Good call by the official. Sure enough, he flinched back with his left arm. Can't do that. That man is a physical specimen. I tell you, we shook hands, his fingers hit me in the middle of the forearm. <laughs> I find out he benches 475 and runs the 40 and 46. He's a talent. And he can eat whatever he wants to eat whenever he wants. What a luxury that is. Third and eight. Here's Terman under pressure from Hayward now. 
steps up and runs. And we'll see where they spot the ball. Will they give him enough for a first down? He's down at the 40. The 40 is exactly where he needed to get for the first down. Well, interesting, just as we talk about Hayward, he comes up field and forces Terman out of the pocket. Comes over the top, shows his speed arm under, can't quite get to him. And now Terman realizes he doesn't. He has limited time. Gets tackled a little bit short, but Steve, down 20 points here in the third quarter. Pittsburgh's certainly going to go for it. Fourth and inches. Everybody's in tight on offense and on defense. And Terman will keep it himself. Now that was strange. And they don't think they have it. No, no, they, they've got it. But it looks a little bit awkward the way he did that. It looked like he was going to start with the option pitch. And at the last minute, he kind of leans under his right guard. Watch this. This is kind of a strange quarterback sneak. Now he slides to right. Now there's the opening. Dives in there, does not get whacked. Wants to take as little contact as possible. In for the first down. Now, Dave Ryan documented the arguments that had been occurring between Antonio Bryant, the quarterback, and the coach. At this point now, after all these running plays, I'm thinking that, how about now? Let's go up top. Herman has run the three first downs tonight. Little shovel pass to Bolo. Bolo's got to block it, and he's got a sideline, one man to beat, and he is just bumped out of bounds, taken out by Dustin Avey, a touchdown saving tackle. But what happens here is this is a very this isn't a very good throw at all. And what I mean is is that it takes it takes too much time. This is one of those the old Utah pass here, Steve, that has to be a little bit the trajectory here is terrible. Pitch it. Look at that. He's buying time, waiting, 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 and now he cuts up field. He's able to get some nice blocks downfield. Take a look right here at the blocking downfield that's going to set set things up for him. And I say the good blocking because they had to do extra. Look at the receivers downfield. There's a block here. Here's a block here. That enables Barlow to cut up field and get the yardage just short of the goal line. First and goal from the two. It's Barlow. He slips down on a second effort. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Ab Turner was there to bring him down. Nobody wants to be down 20 points here, Steve, but you also know that with your big back, this is four-down territory. So might as well give it another shot. And again, we point out the fact that his footing is not so good. I'll be interested if he comes to the sidelines if he ends up changing shoes. I'd be curious to find out how Dave got that information about how traditionally when the roof closes, that the grass becomes slick. And maybe that information was not relayed to either head coach. Second down and goal. Out of the eye. Option quarterback will keep it and get in. Touchdown. Rod Rutherford checked in at quarterback. The third string quarterback. The second string wide receiver. And it's Rutherford keeping it on the option for the touchdown. That's his first of his college career. And Rutherford's a pretty terrific athlete. As you see, A.V. is down on the field. 20 rushes for 77 yards. See if he had two catches for 82 yards. And this season, he had 12 kickoff returns for over a 20-yard average. Six foot three, 215 pounder. Brian Anderson, the right guard for Pittsburgh, is also down. So a couple of injured players on that last play. A 12-play drive. Ending in a Pittsburgh touchdown, a drive that took nearly seven full minutes off the clock. There are three players now being attended to. Now, in theory, Steve, something worth discussing here is that you take seven minutes off the clock, you say, boy, that's not a good thing because we're down 20 points. But here's what it does. Obviously, you know that there's 23 minutes remaining in the game, plenty of time. It keeps the offense on its heels a little bit. I think, I think the Iowa State offense is going to be a little bit cold. And keep in mind, they had that whole drive without going once again to Antonio Bryant. While the injured players are being attended to, we'll step out. Welcome back to the Insight.com Bowl. Nick Lotz is on to attempt an extra point. Make this a 13-point game. Give it a whole different complexion than what it looked like as we headed for halftime. And struggle with the short field goal, remember, Steve, just before half. And Lotz puts it through with 8-10 to go here in the third. It's 27-14. to 14. Pittsburgh has had their only touchdowns on their first possession of each half. 
This is a historic night, as we told you, the first ever football game being played here at the Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix. Last night, some more history was made. The first ever college basketball game was played outdoors. Arizona State, the home team, didn't just take on anybody. It took on Pat Summit, number two, Tennessee. Tennessee came away a winner, but I think uh, all the college basketball, especially women's college basketball, and really Arizona State's program with all the attention to the game last night. Are they better than you? I want to know. Clearly, if you watch those ESPN That's promos. What I'm asking. I'm asking. That campaign, they're a lot better. They're better than you. It's not even close. Right, I'm going to tell you right now, they're not. Oh. I, got, I got some games. All right? I just want you to really? know that. I got some games. <laughs> now... In fairness, I believe that was for the WNBA, not college, not women's college hoops. But I would still say that the women's college hoop team is better than you are. <laughs> you In would. Effect, I would say the 12th woman you on the you, women's right, college right, basketball a, you team. Know what, you haven't seen my game. I got some game now. A lot younger than you are, Tom. <laughs> oh, yeah, those were a lot of years woo. when you could sky a long woo. time ago. You could stick three, four sheets of paper under my game. <laughs> And it's put to the sky for the kickoff, and here's J.J. Moses returning it. Moses cuts right into the Pittsburgh defense. And we'll see if that pit defense is sparked by the latest score. Chris Fowler, back to you in the studio. Well, Steve, earlier today, the Panthers' arch travels from West Virginia sent Don Nealon out a winner. Brad Lewis was brilliant. Quarterback question for the game was unconscious in the first half. Antonio Brown with this touchdown. Big rally by the Rebels comes up short. Nealon breaks an eight-game bowl losing streak. Mentioned their rivals, Chris, the old backyard brawl. Pittsburgh beating West Virginia 38-28. Back on November 24th in the season finale. Regular season finale. Couldn't happen to a nicer man, though, to go out a winner. I agree. Handoff. And it's Haywood, the ball carrier, for a pickup of one. Amir Purifoy for Pittsburgh making the stop. Now, if you're at home and you're watching the Pittsburgh defense, take a look at the body English. It seemed like they were back on their heels the entire time, but this is astonishing. Four straight drives and four straight touchdowns. Not a good thing for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Here, Paul Rhodes and his crew have to, stu have to suck it up here and play better on that side of the ball. Also interesting to know that Pittsburgh 12-play drive. They had one official pass, and that was that little pitch pass. Otherwise, it's all on the ground with Barlow. The pass completed to Craig Campbell. His second catch of the night out to the 40-yard line. William Ferguson brought him down after the gain of 15. And we go down to the field, and Dave Ryan. All right, guys, bad news on the injury front for both teams. For Pittsburgh, Brian Anderson, the starting offensive lineman. Steve, we saw he went down in that last touchdown run by Rod Rutherford. They're fearing a lower leg fracture. You're going to take him in for x-rays. On the other side of things for Iowa State, defensive back Dustin Avey may have torn ligaments in his knee done for the game they're going to evaluate him but he will not be back in for iowa state all right dave thank you keep us posted with seven minutes to play here in the third quarter they go play action and the oh, 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 no. oh my gosh i'm what sure a hit jj moses was, was the ball pounded by brian beinecke and this after we were told by the Iowa State coaches that no one ever gets a hard pop on Moses. Well, there it was. Wow. Steve, I got to tell you, it reminded me of Super Bowl XI. Remember the Sammy White Jack Tatum hit? Really, I thought that was a fumble. The helmet came out so strong. Take a look and listen. There's nothing like reading a reverse and knowing that the guy is as vulnerable as wow. he is. Wow, that is a collision. Out of the shotgun now. Here's Shades Rosenfels rolling to his right and throwing. And the pass up high and caught. What a tremendous catch there by Jamal Montgomery. His first catch of the game. He's 5'11". He really skied for that one. And Rosenfels has completed 11 in a row. This is a bit of a quail, though. Look at that ball going up and down. And you're absolutely right. That's a great catch catch by Montgomery bringing that down not only minus the spiral but a little bit above his hands as well Rosenfels has been on some kind of streak Steve since he started two for five married life agreeing with him the 22 year old married for a year and a half one of four married cyclones on the football team New safety blitz the pass on his back foot right in. They catch it. No. He, didn't. he did. They said he was out of bounds. Moses was all by himself. 
and did not have a chance to look down to the sideline. That's exactly right. Moses needed to be aware of where he was on the field. He was so wide open and so excited to get into the end zone. Watch him right here. Now he's got to sit there with his feet. But instead, what he does is he lifts the foot up. He doesn't know where he is on the field. You can see that because he starts to run up the field here on the flight. Boy, that's a big break for Pittsburgh wow. there, forcing the punt. Again, in college football, you only need one foot in, and Moses didn't even have that going on. They teach receivers over and over again, Steve, though, to be aware of where you are on the field. There's no way he could have known the guy behind him had fallen down the way he had. Carl Gomez is back in punt formation from his own 35. Antonio Bryant still looking for his first big play of the second half. He's back deep to receive. By spiraling kick. Here's Bryant trying to make something out of nothing. Trying to get around the end, and he won't. Tremendous special team stop by Adam Runk. 41-yard punt, only a three-yard return. Made the momentum starting the swing in the direction of Pittsburgh. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Insight.com Bowl is brought to you by Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money. Get well connected by Buick and your local Buick dealers. And by Bats, a beer apart. The Raiderettes in town giving it a big league feel in this big league city, Phoenix, for this college football game. The Insight.com Bowl. And Pittsburgh trying to do more than just hang around here. They had their winning a season in over a decade. Coming out of the Big East with a 7-4 overall record, 4-3 in the conference. Iowa State went 8-3, 5-3 in the Big 12. Terman, quarterback, hands it off to Barlow. And he is wrestled down at the 21 by Chris Whitaker of the Cyclones. What they're doing, and this is smart on the part of Pittsburgh, Iowa State is so conscious, so conscious of Bryant that they're off the ball about 8 to 10 yards. Walt Harris is seeing this. And he's saying to himself, all right, if that's what they're going to do, and they're going to have seven in the box, we're going to come with our three wide receivers, we're going to have them inside, and we're going to get them the ball. Antonio Bryant, we saw him in the 72-yard play. He's a star. But also one of the things you have to be aware of is if they're going to take you away, you have to be man enough to say, okay, somebody else can make a contribution, and that man has been Barlow. Second down and three. Terman hands it off. It's Barlow again. Mark Timmons makes the stop. And there is Sage Rosenfeld, who's having himself one fine ball game. Completing the last 11 passes in a row. I'm sure that we're not the first to point out that he's got that Opie Taylor thing working. <laughs> but having said that, the thing about this young man is that he's shown a lot of courage in the pocket. He's taking some hits now on some of those blitzes, but he keeps bouncing back. He is a terrific athlete. Coming up on four minutes to play here in the third quarter. Barlow again to the 32-yard line. Hayward brought him down, making the run stop. We talked about his impressive numbers. Reggie Hayward, you know, we rarely see a defensive end lead the team in tackles, but a guy who leads the team in tackles and sacks, that's also out of the ordinary. Somebody busy. Clearly somebody who's busy. Somebody that makes plays, and I think that speaks a lot for him because usually you get guys nowadays because of the proliferation of specialists in the game. Well, I'm a sack guy, you know, I'm a tackle guy, or I'm a third down guy. Guy plays every down, plays every play. Second and seven. Here's Terman to throw. Side line. And Great it is catch. And it's Barlow. Rather, Green, I beg your pardon. Latif Green making the catch 27 yards. That's his first catch. And you would figure if Bryant wasn't getting the ball, Grimm would be, and that has not been the case. That's what I was thinking, and of course, they're, they're in a zone situation. He gets he gets chucked, he leaves him behind. This is a nice throw by Terman. Grimm does a good job of extending himself and making the catch, but Terman able to deliver it between the corner and the safety. Grimm, as I mentioned, has a chance to have a big game. Over the last two, this year, he only had 39 catches, but in 98 and 99, he averaged 67 catches for 1,000 yards. The all-time leading receiver in Pittsburgh history. Handoff, it's Nick Goins who has checked into the backfield and 
Well, he wasn't going anywhere. Justin Eiler is making the stop for Iowa State. Couldn't resist that, could you? Uh, it was right there for me. Well, again, you know, you want to give Barlow has been carrying the ball practically every play, and he needs a bit of a rest. But now, second and very long, this is a situation where Terman's going to have to go up top again. Eilers is an interesting guy, a guy who has competed in the ultimate fighting tournaments. So, you know, he's okay in the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Makes the stop there. For the loss, second down and 12. Sends Slade in motion back the other way. Here's Terman firing. And he was looking for Grimm again. And Grimm slipped down to the turf on the play. Again, the slip and fall. That's got to kill you when you're on timing routes, and that's exactly what Term was doing. He had Grimm on the hook, had him wide open, but he slipped down, and the ball falls awry, and now you've got a third and extremely long. Dave? Well, guys, we talked about the roof being closed here and how the field can be affected by that. A lot of moisture is on the grass, especially from the hash marks to the boundary, and that's where we saw the receiver Grimm fall a moment ago. Tough footing for Barlow as well, especially in that part of the field, Steve. Great job, Dave. You were on that right from the beginning as soon as they had closed the roof. On third down and 12, here's Terman firing deep. He's got him. Caught. What a catch. Touchdown. And the big play specialist, Antonio Bryant, Man. is back in the game. A 44-yard bomb for the touchdown. His second of the game. We've got ourselves a bowl game. And we got to give a lot of credit here to the offensive line of Pittsburgh. They gave Terman play. Plenty of time to survey the field. Bryant was not his first choice on the post route. Instead, he was looking downfield. Bryant there in the middle. Look at the throw. He fades on and extends himself. Makes a terrific catch. But give Terman credit. He had it between the two defenders. Wow. It's Steve, it's so much fun when you have a star player that everybody's talking about, and he comes into a game of this magnitude, and he delivers. Bryant with touchdown catches of 72 and 44 yards. This is 13th of the season. We got flags on the extra point attempt. An attempt we will point out, and depending upon what happens, the score might look kind of strange. Keep in mind, after Iowa State's second touchdown, they missed the extra point. Case, Dead ball Casey foul. Baldwin. Ball start. His on name the offense. could be an infamy. He Five is yards. the holder for Iowa Still State. They kind of bobbled that ball a little bit. And as you pointed out, there's a lot of football yet to be played, but certainly you don't want to give up a point. Well, I tell you what, number 80 impresses me. I, I had heard all the kudos I wanted to see for myself. Possession guy, speed guy, great hands guy, runs the routes for it. He's already ready for the next level. Here's lots of high snap. The place was good, and the kick is not. So now each team has missed an extra point. And he really takes Iowa State's special teams off the hook. A seven-point game. Well, even though Antonio Bryant argues and wants the ball, I think that speaks volumes about the great ones. People like Moss and Bryant and Jimmy Smith, they want the ball. Look at the running right here, extends himself. Wow, what a terrific catch. He does a great job of cushioning the ball. The difficult catch right here is the ball can be shaken by the earth instead. Look what he does. He gets his elbow underneath the ball. The ball is not shaken out. Just a terrific catch. He catches both ends of the ball. Very difficult thing to do. And, of course, John Terman has struggled today. He's got to like that one. I got my rhythm. That's right. We're in this thing. Pittsburgh has scored touchdowns on their first two possessions of this half. I wonder if Walt Harris said something at halftime, or maybe he didn't have to say anything at all. Uh, you know what? I can read his lips, and I know what he's saying. I told you. I told you. Throw me the ball. Throw me the ball. Good things will happen, and certainly they have. Bryant, who there's been whispers about the NFL and his future, and if it is, that future won't be next season. Yeah, Antonio baby. has already said he will be back at Pittsburgh staff. for next season. Of course, after that, we'll see. Only a sophomore. He's already fifth on the all-time Pittsburgh receiving list for a sophomore. So here we go, and Iowa State will have a chance to counter. Jermaine Billups is set to return it. And Billups gets it out to the 27-yard line. Capital One Bowl Week will continue for you. On ESPN, it's the Outback Bowl. Monday, 
at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. South Carolina head coach Lou Holtz this season completed one of the great turnarounds in the history of college football. He's now led six different teams to bowl games. That should be terrific against Steve Belisari and number 18, Ohio State. I don't have this at my fingertips, but I'm guessing that he's the only man in history to go from 0-11 to a bowl game. That's just astonishing. These two programs have had great comebacks under their two respective head coaches the year prior to the new coaches coming in, but not 0-11 for sure. And a hard hit. Rosenfels absorbs that one as he kept it. Ramon Walker was there to put the stick on him. One of the hardest hitters for the Panthers. His 11th tackle of the game. He separated Rosenfels from the ball, but fortunately for them, they were on the short side of the field. And the ball bounces out of bounds. Again, that's a good job by the first down. That's now 13 out of 21 times that they've been able to get more than four yards on first down as Iowa State. Minute 44, the clock running here in the third quarter in a seven-point game. Two tight ends for Iowa State on second down. With a handoff to Haywood and another stop for Walker. It was first team all Big East last year, second team all Big East this year. Our Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, well-connected storyline from Phoenix. Well, look, we talked about it at the start of the show, Steve. Who are the two stars we pointed out? Huh, Bryant and Rosenfels. Guess what? They haven't disappointed, folks. Rosenfels in particular. I didn't know he was going to be that effective, frankly. I figured most people realize that Bryant could do some things. The two absolutely huge plays for the Panthers have got them back in this thing. You see the disparity in the first and second half for offensive numbers for Iowa State. They look to work on that here. And you hear it from the crowd. Tremendous enthusiasm really here for a, a neutral site game like most ball games are. On third and one, Rosenfeld tried to keep it and didn't get close. Stopped by Mike White. Huge defensive play for the Panthers. Really was, and that's great penetration. You can see the excitement of defensive coordinator Paul Rhodes as he bounces out there. White does a great job of getting through the speed. Now you figure the Rose goes, there's nothing behind me. I'm going to go for the first. No. White is there and drops him in his tracks for the loss. And once again, Iowa State's going to be forced to punt. And as you pointed out, Steve, on the last drive, clearly the momentum has shifted sides. White, the big defensive play, the senior, has about doubled his production from his sophomore and junior seasons combined. He makes the big stop there, forcing Carl Gomez to the punt formation. Gets it away, and Antonio Bryant there thinking about another big play in the 25. And he is swarmed on top of by three Iowa State players led by Doug Densmore. Down to the field, here's Dave. All right, Steve, Iowa State has three players who are married. One is quarterback Sage Rosenfels, and here's his wife, Maria. He told us yesterday that you guys didn't date in high school because you wouldn't go out with him. Is that true? It's not really true. We were really good friends after middle school and high school. And we were both really busy, and to be honest, we dated other people and had fun, and we just weren't ready for that serious relationship yet. So once we got into college, we realized that it was time, and we were ready for each other. So it has been a great experience for you uh, and the whole family to, to watch him play in this big bowl game? It's been amazing. I mean, Sage has worked so hard for this for five years. It's been a dream come true for him and our family, and so it's amazing. We understand he's a great athlete, and he likes golf now. What's his best sport? It's, it's hard to say. Any sport? Oh. Any sport stage is on. I mean, it's like everything he does, you think he can't do it, and then the next thing you know, he's shooting a 39 in golf. He, didn't, he never golfed. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. No problem. Steve? The 39, I think we should point out, is on a nine-hole golf course. The course he plays most frequently on. He's a heck of an athlete, but he's not shooting any 39. <laughs> Three quarters complete. Hey, he's having a terrific game. The fourth quarter is next. Just about set for the start of the fourth quarter. Iowa State up in front, 27-20 over Pittsburgh. And I'm not sure the end of the third quarter is like the seventh inning stretch. We are in a baseball stadium. While we were in commercial, they did play. Let's take me out to the ball game. And we've got a ball game now. As that pass is nearly intercepted there by Timmins. And Chris Fowler, back to you in the studio. Well, you guys watch Antonio Bryant make plays. Another top receiver, Corn Robinson, has brought the Wolfpack back. Hauling in this Phillip Rivers pass with a circus catch. NC State trailed 24-0, but like Georgia, last year against Purdue, trying to stage a furious rally. That set up for Ray Robinson touchdown and scored 25 in a row. 
right, Chris, thank you. As we open up fourth quarter action here, third down and seven upcoming. Nick Goings in the backfield. And he stays in the block. Terman in trouble, dumps it off, able to complete the pass to Slade, but he is well shy of the first down. Reggie Hayward was the man that put the pressure on, almost had the sack. Great play by number 15, putting Terman on his heels. The result is even though he completes the pass, it's far short. Bunch and penetrator the inside just shoves out of the way. There's actually a double team there between the guard and tackle, but there's nothing they can do with Hayward. He pushes Terman back single-handedly. Forces the three and out. Andy Lee is on to punt. Jermaine Billups is back deep along with Adam Runk for Iowa State. Good protection for Lee and the true freshman gets it away. And it's Phillips trying the right side. Someone slipped down He's the side. He's Phillips. gone. He's crazy. He's going to win it. Jermaine Phillips. Touchdown. A 72-yard punt return. Steve, I'm looking on the field. I don't see any flags. Near the end, it looked like it might have been close to the block in the back. But you're right. People slipped down. There was no safety. No punter there. And Phillips gets exactly what Iowa State needed with a more of an offense. They needed something to get them started, and that's what they got. And the big plays just keep on coming in this first-ever Insight.com ball at the Bank One ballpark in Phoenix. The extra point attempt for Carl Gomez. It is up, and that one is good. Not a whole lot of one and two yard touchdowns in this one. It's been a big play tight ball game as exhibited by Jermaine Phillips. 72 yard punt return to expand on the Cyclones lead. You look at Jermaine Billups, the 72-yard punt return for a touchdown. He's a freshman out of Omaha, Nebraska. And Dan McCarney was talking about him yesterday. He, Billups is the first Nebraska football player of the year that they've ever been able to get out of the state to Iowa State. And what a play he makes here in the bowl game. It's got to be exciting, doesn't it? I mean, you don't have that many carries during the year. You're not that involved. Eight of them. Then the biggest, biggest game of the year, you come through with that punt return. A 72-yard touchdown national TV. Well, that's big. Well, we mentioned the recruiting, you know, getting Phillips out of the state. You know, a performance like this by Iowa State will only help in future recruiting, getting other players out of, out of state. Again, more slipping and falling. Tory Cox now hoping some defenders would slip and fall. They do not. And he brings it out to the 18-yard line. 34-20, to 20, Iowa State final quarter. Combination of two things, Steve, necessitated this. First, it's a low punt that he has some room to get. Now, as you watch their people, he's going to get a seam. He's going to get a seam right here. Look at the seam here. The white shirt's a little bit late in getting over, and there's no safety back here. Usually, you've got a fast guy who's back there. Instead, he cuts there, and there's nobody left. The man that's chasing him is an offensive lineman, number 55, and that's Ryan. Gonzalez, a linebacker, he has no shot of catching Billups, and the result is he takes it to the house. And it's the first Cyclone punt return for a touchdown in eight years. Here's Pittsburgh on offense now with Terman, and he's going to be brought down. Reggie Hayward, the man to watch for, comes up with the big sack for Iowa State. The sack leader in the regular season. Well, the right tackle is just being manhandled. That's number 75 for Pittsburgh. I believe that that's Matt Morgan. The result is, is that he just cannot deal with Hayward at all. Remember, we saw the last play before, Steve. They've been moving Hayward around trying to get trying to get a mismatch. I think they have one there with the right tackle. That chance of Reggie, Reggie here in Phoenix with all the Iowa State fans on. We asked him if he had a nickname, and he said Big Reg, and he said he's going to have to work on that if he fortunate enough to play in the NFL. Second down and 18 now. Some Slade in motion. Here's Terman. Steps up and throws and completes to Grimm, who took a big hit at the 25, but hung onto the ball. Timmons really rung his bell. 
Let's go down to Dave Ryan. All right, speaking of bells being rung, J.J. Moses, we saw that huge hit he took earlier in the second half when Brian Beinecke of Pittsburgh laid him out and dislodged the helmet. Well, you can see some of the trainers working on him closely. They're asking him questions. That's because he's having severe headaches and some memory problems. As you can imagine, pretty easily, a very severe concussion. And J.J. says he had a headache earlier, actually, before that big hit from Beinecke. But after that, it's gotten a lot worse. We don't think we'll see him back in the game tonight. That's a shame, Dave. Thanks. We know how important this game was to him and his family. As that pass is completed to Bryant, he's got just enough to slow him down before help could arrive as Antonio Bryant is brought down at the 35. Well, as a result of two absolutely huge plays, what are you going to do with number 80? Of course you're going to give him some room, and that's what happens here at third and three. They give him plenty of room. They're not in a press coverage. Takes the three-step drop, delivers it easy. Look at the separation here between himself and Jamarcus Powers. Breaks out of one tackle, but could not keep his balance. Brian now with only his fourth catch, but two of them, of course, have been gigantic. The numbers are four for 139 and two scores for Antonio Bryant. Hand off to Kevin Barlow. And Barlow, Stefan, leaps over a defender. There was a hit late. There is a flag that does come late. He was. And the Pittsburgh sideline certainly agreeing with the call, whatever it is. Good, th good three yards out of bounds, and that'll get him inside the 35. A little bit too zealous at the end of the play right there. He's down. Oh, I don't know. Well, that's a little, that, that's a little iffy. Of course, that's Adam Ronk, the man that we've been talking about on punt returns. After the play, a late hit out of bounds on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. It's a tough call. But it was a tough call because clearly he hits him out of bounds, but it's not as if it looked like there was anything ominous about it. He lays on top, and that's his momentum carrying him out. That's, that's a tough one to call. I think Pittsburgh got a break there. And Pittsburgh will take the break, down 14. That last run is a 13-yard run, puts Barlow over 100 yards for the game. Walt Harris screams for his eagle package, whatever that is. I mean, you don't know? I know what it is on defense. Here's Terman throwing, completes across the middle to Slade, getting some blockers and using the sideline as his friend as well, and he's out to the 23. There's another flag. And it would be for a first down. Might be a cut block downfield, Steve. When he picked up the blocker, it appeared that instead of staying up, he went down, and that's exactly what happens. It's a 13-yard gain if it stands. See, this is something that I'm sure that Walt Harris is second-guessing himself that he wishes he'd have done earlier. By running the crossing routes with his receivers, of course, and because of the attention they're paying to Bryant, that is going to free up people like Slade and Latif underneath to give him a chance to get some yak. And if you're not familiar with Walt Harris, his strength has always been offense, especially quarterbacks and wide receivers. There's some talk about there was no foul. wide receiver you. An inadvertent flag. No penalty. The 13-yard gain will stand. And a first down for Pittsburgh. Well, here's what's talked about here is the low block. Right here, watch number four, and then sliding in to make a play on him here. Kind of a roll block. I think what they, I think what they were talking about there is maybe that that was incidental because I remember the BYU-Utah game. Remember they called that on margin hooks in a similar situation. On first and 10, Terman looking for the end zone. And Grimm went up. It was a bit too high for him. He also turned the wrong direction as Terman picks himself up off the grass. Well, he turned the wrong direction because the ball was overthrown. That was a corner route to Grimm. He needed it over his right shoulder. Grimm, Grimm a little bit frustrated because he knew he had it. Had it he knew he was open. Once again, Reggie Hayward, number 15, comes upfield, able to escape with the arm under. Clobbers Terman right at the end of the play. The tackles are doing a poor job with him, but again, Mark Brown is the man in this case. Grimm, the senior, has something to look forward to. They get to play in another game, the East-West Shrine at Pac Bell, near his hometown in San Francisco. They dump it off to Barlow. 
gets a block and is knocked out at the 10-yard line. The defender in this case, I'm not sure if it was word, does a great job of penetrating the double-team block downfield, and what he does is he forces a holding call. That screen pass was set up very well, Steve. It appeared that I, I thought he was going to get into the end zone. They had it set up so well. Watch the right of your screen. Watch, watch the defender knife through the two white shirts. Is that word? Only, I, 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 can't, I can't quite tell. From the spot I believe that was Justin Eilers. Three plays second down. And it was a result of rolling on his back as he did a little bit of acting. He was able to force the holding call and set Pittsburgh back. Would have been a 13-yard gain down to the 8-yard line. And they'll push him back to the 31. Instead, it ends up being a 23-yard penalty. And every now and then, gamesmanship, a little thespianism, take you a long way. This has got the makings of a, of a boxing match, right? You have one team on the ropes, and then you don't. And the other team on the ropes. Tremendous swings in this one. Pittsburgh looking to put a swing in their favor. Here's Terman across the middle. Wide open is Grimm, and he makes the catch. And slipped down to the 13. And do you know why he had the reaction he did? What he was hoping to do is that he slides in that zone. He wanted to slow down, let the defender go past. And he's saying right there, you know what? If I didn't slow down, I go into the end zone. This is the skinny post or the deep slant, depending upon your terminology. Now, once he makes the catch, he wants to slow down. Instead, he realizes, ah, nuts! If I'd have kept going, I could have gotten the house! <laughs> 23 yards on that game. And all of a sudden, the Pittsburgh offense is clicking on all cylinders. 11 and a half to play in the fourth. It's been a good one. Glad you joined us on ESPN from Phoenix in the Bank One Ballpark. Oh. That ball is just overthrown. Looking to go Bryant in the corner. Breon Ansley had the coverage. You see the quarterback comparison. It was very one-sided in the first half, but certainly that's changed here in the second half as Terman is hooked up. Not just, let's not forget, not just with Bryant, but Grimm and Slade have made a couple of catches. Now he's over 300 yards. I'm surprised at that. Wow. Be great to talk to Walt Harris and ask him just how close he was to making a change at quarterback. Good point. Whether he would be honest enough to tell us, no, I was going to go with Terman all the way. Harris told us yesterday he wanted John Terman to play this entire game, and so far, at this point, it's working out anyway. Here's Terman, plenty of time across the middle. And that was in and out of the hands of Latif Grimm. Probably should have brought that one down. Steve, they've got him isolated on the wide side. They're so conscious of Bryant. They've got Latif Grimm isolated with Sloth on the wide side. If Walt Harris is aware of that, now he throws back. This is just a little bit too tall for Grimm. He can't quite come up with it. But all he has to do is run a fade route, one of those ISO routes to the outside. Fade stop, slant, any one of those routes get Latif Grimm the ball. Because on the right side, on the weak side where they have Bryant, they are really jamming the coverage in. Third goal, third and goal from the eight-yard line. Bryant, bottom of your screen. Terman doesn't look that way. And it's nearly picked off. Great coverage on the play by Iowa State. Stevie Johnson, the former standout Cyclones basketball player, was in the coverage. Now, see, that was a poor job by Terman. He made the decision just way too soon. That was a premeditated decision, you can see. But Walt Harris isn't very happy about it. He's lucky that that didn't get picked off and gone the other way. He had, he had in the middle of the field, he had his inside receiver as well as he had goings coming out of the backfield, but he was determined to make that throw. Nick Lotz is on. He's missed from 23. This is a 25-yarder. Now, if you're 10 of 18 on the season. Sorry to interrupt, Steve. The reason I say this is you're saying, why would you do this? I'll tell you in just a second. Gets it up and away, and it's through. Nick Lotz connects. 11 points makes it, Steve. That's a two-score game. A field goal, touchdown, and two-point conversion. So if you're saying, why did they go for the touchdown? That's the reason. 11-point margin, 11 minutes left. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Insight.com Bowl is presented by Insight. High tech, low cost, smart business. And in part by Chrysler. We're reinventing the passion for driving. Last year's Insight.com Bowl, not nearly as competitive in Tucson. Colorado hammered Boston College 62-28 here 
a totally different story. This game might never Thank leave goodness. Phoenix. Thank goodness. I'll say. It's great. 34-23 Iowa State. The Cyclones will get the football. And the kick, a short kick. Jermaine Billups had a 72-yard punt return for a touchdown. And he won't find as much running room there. And it's out to the 26-yard line. Coming up after our football game, we'll send you back to Dan Patrick and Brian Kenny. They'll have Sports Center. Give you a little preview, a little feel for the Orange Bowl. And the question of the night is upcoming also our peak performers, the Charlotte Hornets. A bit of a slow start, really having a good season in the NBA. That's all coming up with Dan and Brian on Sports Center after the game. All right, who do you like? Tell me now, the Orange Bowl, who do you like? Be bold. I always go with the underdog. So you like Oklahoma? Without a rooting interest, I'll go with Oklahoma. Fumble oh, ball is pitched and fumbled, and Pittsburgh says they have it. Look at the Panther assistant coaches jumping on the sideline. Brian Beinecke. Let's see, we're waiting for the official. There it is. Pittsburgh has it. Beinecke, the fumble recovery for Pittsburgh. And with 10.51 left in the fourth quarter, that is our first turnover of the game. And Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, is arguably the most excited guy there. Here's the pitch. It was a little bit behind Haywood. And who's the guy on the spot? The guy that's been making all of the tackles. That happens to be Ramon Walker, who comes up with a fumble recovery. McCarney can't be very happy about that. Remember, we had that graphic, Steve, earlier about the fact they'd only given up four in three years. This is an absolute, it's, it's never a good time to give up a fumble, but certainly at this point, a terrible time in this game as big as this. First fumble this season by an Iowa State running back, and it leads to this little swing pass out to Polite. The redshirt freshman checking into the ball game, Lusaka Polite on the catch, 13 yards. You've been waiting the whole game to say that name, too, haven't you? He does a nice job, and what's interesting, Steve, is he bobbles the ball a little bit, and that actually gives him a little bit of a hesitation on the defender as he bobbled it, and the guy's waiting for him instead of just attacking him. He gets the ball, puts it under his arm, gets a little extra yardage that he would not have otherwise had. First and ten from the 16 now. See if Pittsburgh can take advantage of the break. The rare Iowa State fumble. And it's polite again. He's inside the five before Adam Runk brought him down. Well, I, I'm tempted to say that thing about his running is anything but polite, so I'll leave it alone. The six foot 240 pounder is pounding between the tackles, and certainly you've got Iowa State on their heels. No need to throw the ball here, first and goal. Continue to run the ball as the offensive line is dominant for the Panthers. Polite, the top receiver out of the backfield this season for Pittsburgh, had 16 catches for 118 yards here on first and goal. And they hand it to him again. Well, he might have juggled the football there inside the five. Ryan Harclaw made the stop. The one thing that Walt Harris is doing here, which is very smart, and I don't understand why other coaches don't do it. Once you get inside the five and you're close to the goal line, you can still run the ball, but you don't have to jam everybody in. You don't have to go with a three tight end set. What happens is as soon as you jam that in, the guys back there can come up in the box, the corners and the safeties. He still has his wide receivers out there. Everybody knows how dangerous they are. And the result is that Iowa State cannot stick everybody in there between the tackles. This was a 20-point lead for Iowa State at halftime. Pittsburgh looking to really cut into that, and they have. Touchdown for Kevin Barlow. Just made it across the line. His ninth touchdown of the season, and we're an extra point away from having a four-point football game with nine and a half to play in the fourth. And Steve, here at 34-29, to 29, we mentioned the two-score situation. They have to go for two here because they want to get it to within a field goal. So Barlow stays right back on the field. And I'm not sure, Steve, I know that this might sound a little bit strange, but I'm not sure that they couldn't just go with something off tackle right here. Iowa State spread them out, just go between. The tendency here is always with the run pass thing and have the quarterback roll out with the option. But I tell you what, the offensive line here, despite the injury that they had to Anderson earlier, has been dominant here in the second half. 28-yard drive and four plays following the fumble recovery. Here they go for the two-point conversion. Three receivers in. Barlow, the lone setback, they put him in motion. Here's Terman, and the pass is batted down. 
And you see the reaction by Terman. He might have hit his hand on a helmet there. But either way, it's a failed two-point conversion that keeps it a five-point game. Well, see, we certainly have had our share of momentum swings coming into this game. At 27-7 to at halftime, you're thinking to yourself, boy, I tell you what, what's up? But Bryant, with the diving catch, fires up the Panthers. And just when it seemed as if the Panthers were going to take over, you had Billups with the 72-yard punt return to ignite the Cyclone faithful. And on the other side of the ball, then, here we are. We never fumble, right? Oh, my gosh, what a terrible time to fumble for the first time of the year. The result is a Barlow touchdown back in this game now, only down by five, a five-point game with 9.45 remaining. Steve, remember we were talking about Rosenfels and how effective he had been in the first half at 15 for 19. Here in the second half, Steve, he was only two for three for 32 yards. In fact, Iowa State only has 32 total yards here in the second half. The pressure is really on the offense here to do something in this drive. You saw Haywood before his reaction. Of course, the player who fumbled the football leading to the turnover and the ensuing touchdown by Pittsburgh. What a football game this has been. Five-point game with 9.45 to play in the fourth quarter, coming up from Phoenix. Here's Phillips now from the 10. And Phillips takes out a couple of Pittsburgh players and is brought down, led by Cody Miller, the linebacker making the special team stop. Here's, here's McCarney, the coach, getting with them now, saying, wait a minute, it was 27-7. to 7. We can't lay down here in the second half. Really, the only thing they've done in the second half of consequence is that 72-yard punt return. You can see he's not very happy. He may agree, as, as Dave Ryan pointed out. He said, don't celebrate too soon. Maybe that's what some of those players have done. Iowa State's only had nine players from scrimmage this half. Not this quarter, this half. There's their tenth. And Rosenfeld's trying to get it going again. He completes to Jamal Montgomery. Another stop for Ramon Walker. is 13th of the game. And I like that call. I like that call by Steve Lone, the offensive coordinator there, to move the ball upfield, move the pocket. They've been effective with that. Get any semblance of a pass rush away from your quarterback, giving time to survey the field. Delivers on the money to the hook route for a first down. Keep in mind, Iowa State's without... One of their two explosive offensive players and J.J. Moses will stand out wide receiver. Here's Rosenfeld. Rothman across the middle. I don't know if that was batted away or not, but it could have been picked off. It was. Somebody got a piece of it, and you're right, Steve. Lucky that that win didn't come back. Purifoy was the guy that was closest. Mentioned Moses being attended to on the side. And there's his dad, Jerry, who was watching his son. It's been so frustrating for J.J. Well, it is frustrating, but you do have the rest of your life. And right now, that, that's a glassy look that I see in his eyes. Word from Dave Ryan down on the sideline is that, in fact, Moses is done for this game, as you would expect. Rosenfels, his pass is incomplete. Looking for Chris Anthony, who had two touchdowns earlier in this game. Steve, I'm not making excuses for the young man. But when you get into rhythm, as you did in the first half, when you get the ball back, get the ball back, get the ball back, you are you're with what you what it is you want to do. You can see Paul Rhodes, he's saying, be tough here. This is the call. But he has not been able to get that rhythm in the second half. That's only his fifth throw here in the second half. 33-year-old defensive coordinator among the youngest in the nation, Paul Rhodes for Pittsburgh. Big third down. It's third and ten. Out of the shotgun. Left guard Rosenfels, and the flags fly. Left guard move, Steve. I believe that was number 70. Ben Bidet is the one who flinched just a little bit, and that's going to tack on five yards. Third down. What a difference a half makes. I mean, they could they could do no wrong in those four drives. I mean, they look like a juggernaut. I mean, they look like the St. Louis Rams, for goodness sakes. Now, in the second <laughs> half, it's a different story altogether. Lack of bowl experience, does that play into this at all? Is this something they've never been through? They had the big lead. Well, then why wouldn't that have applied in the first half when you had four straight scoring drives? Well, protecting the lead has to be a little bit different. Yep, absolutely. Pittsburgh's coming with a blitz. Bringing some people. They buy Rosenfeld's time. He should have man-to-man -man coverage. He does. And completed pass there 
to Montgomery who came back to the ball. Walker on the stop. Far be it for me to second guess, Steve, but third and 15 is, an, is not the time to blitz. Paul Rhodes should have been content to be back in his zone. Instead, he decides he's going to come with seven. Result is the line does a great job of protecting. Look at Rosenfels pumping twice, gets the ball, delivers it on the money. There's a situation where you got third and 15. Go back in the zone. Let him complete a pass for eight, nine, ten yards. You don't care. Force a punt. Instead, you got single coverage, and that's exactly what happened. You got your free safety, not used to covering man for man. The result of first down for the Cyclones. First and ten across midfield at the 44 of Pittsburgh. Eight and a half to go in the fourth. Rosenfeld lost one. There's some contact down there. Montgomery, the intended receiver, is with Sean Robinson. And that's what the Cyclone fans want, would be a flag. Good no call, though, by the official because they're pushing one another. If it's one-sided, then you can say something. But instead, it was going back and forth between Robinson and Montgomery, and you'll see it. Watch Montgomery turn out. Now he turns his hips. He's running right with him. There's the left hand. Now he pushes with the right. He pushes with the left. He pushes with the right. It's a good non-call by the official. And Rosenfels is saying, no, wait a minute, come on. Nope. Good try, no cigar. Second down and ten after the incompletion. Rosenfels firing high and tipped down. Again, Montgomery's become his favorite receiver all of a sudden. Torrey Cox was on the coverage there. It's ironic because Montgomery had just two catches all season. Now take a look if you're at home. Take a look here on third 10, what Paul Rhodes' defensive coordinator opts to call. The last time, remember third and 15, they went with a blitz at Costa. Here now again, they're going to have third and very long. That looks very similar to the call that he had. That had that cobra thing with the circle. Are you stealing signs? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I would think you, you want to go with your zone. Give him time to throw, but don't let him throw past the 10-yard strike. Here's third and ten now. Rosenfels is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. The blitz and here they come. They buy in some time, and the pass is knocked away. Tremendous defensive coverage. Sean Robinson on Lane Danielson. And remember, Sean Robinson's a converted receiver. They weren't quite sure what to do with him, but he's been involved in a number of plays. Does he go over the top? Take a look at this. That's always a tough thing to call. I think it's a good defensive play. You know that you're going to get a beef. You're going to get a beef for number 82, Danielson. I think that's a good play and a good job by the, the official in center field not to throw the flag. Robinson was tied for seventh in the nation. He had six interceptions and defended the second most passes in the Big East. So a good coverage play there. Here's Carl Gomez to kick it away. And Antonio Bryant, signal for the fair catch. We'll see where it bounces. Great effort. And it's what a great effort. For Iowa State. Doug Dinsmore was smart enough to run past the fair catch and save the ball from going into the end zone. Well, that's a great job. That's a heads-up play. You see the first guy to shake his hand there was the head coach. Watch at the end of the play. Bryant actually, I thought, did a fairly good job of faking out. Densmore slips, but he's able to keep the ball in play. Oh, that's a great job by number 24. Just a terrific effort. Densmore, a guy you root for. Guy who won the award for a great contributor with little public recognition. Down to Dave. Well, guys, Panther defensive back Sean Robinson made that big play a moment ago. He credits the new defensive coordinator Paul Rhodes with helping him have a big year. He led the team with a six interception, set a school record with passes broken up. He had 18. Now, when Rhodes came to Pittsburgh this year, he switched Robinson from the wide out to the secondary. Sean said he was afraid the change would be too hard on him, but Rhodes made the transition easy. Because he's a younger guy, very easy to relate to. It belongs to the receiving team at that spot. First down. It doesn't matter. It's still on the one-yard line. They say illegal touching. Dan McCartney's wondering what the deal is, but as long as it's on the one-yard line, he didn't care. So Pittsburgh is pinned deep, trailing by five, with 7.59 to play in the fourth quarter. Now here's something that I've learned from the Bo Jackson days. Remember when he had all those long 90-yard runs? The idea is there's a lot of field to defend here. A lot more field to defend. It makes the throws easier. Terman is throwing, and it was behind the intended receiver, Bryant, who might have slipped down with Breon Ansley on the coverage. At this point, it's a little bit late here in the fourth quarter to talk about whether or not you have the right cleats. 
But uh, Dave Ryan was certainly prescient when he mentioned the fact that they would be slipping down later on, and that has happened a lot here in the second half. And you can hear the Iowa State crowd with a chance of defense trying to protect this five-point lead. Turman deep in the end zone, throws and hits Grimm. He's down at the 10-yard line. Looks like he'll come up short of the first down. I think he needed another yard for the first. And, Steve, that's big because he really did have time to stay on his feet and lean forward and get the first down. And if they don't get it here on third, they're going to remember that. He needed to turn up the field instead of just slide and make the catch. And look at the total yards and the domination by Pittsburgh here in the second half. Walt Harris said this season's been rolling seven the hard way, seven being the victory total, looking for eight. They hand it off to Barlow. He's got the first down without a problem. Timmons to stop. Barlow has been the go-to guy in those situations. Barlow now over 100 yards, 21 carries for 117 yards on the day. Now, this isn't going to help, Steve, if Morgan is down. Remember, Morgan is the guy who had to go. He's the backup tackle that came in. What they had to do on the offensive line because of the injury to Anderson is they had moved they had moved Kiawatha Downey down to guard, and they had moved Morgan out to tackle. Now, remember, Morgan was the guy that was getting abused by Hayward. Remember in that one stretch. So now Pittsburgh is really hurting on the offensive line. Their depth has got to be a question mark. I'll be interested to see who's going to come up here at right tackle and right guard, and that will give Hayward a chance to lick his chops. 7-18 left here in the fourth. First and 10 upcoming. And Steve, this is the situation in the fourth quarter. The clock running a little over seven minutes left. The big players have to make plays. Bryant has to make a play. Hayward has to make a play. I think Downey's out on that offensive line. Looks like he tried to run into the game, but the coach has held him out. And that is not a surprise with shuffling so many different people in and out of the exactly offensive right. line that they're called for the flag and probably a motion penalty. Steve, you're very astute. That's exactly right. Brand new people, and you're not sure. Dead ball foul. Full start on the offense. Five yards. Still first down. The Walt Harris has no choice. Seven minutes remaining, he's got no choice. He's got to go with the understudies here. Young men that probably had anticipated sitting on the bench and rooting on their teammates now are suddenly thrust with the biggest games of their lives. Manganello, I believe, now is a left tackle. First and 15, here's Terman with time. Loft one, sideline. And it is incomplete. Good double coverage there. There's even a third cyclone as Latif Grimm was going deep. Is it just me, and I'm not trying to be personal here with Latif Grimm, but I weary of everybody begging for the flag. Good double team. They had him stride for stride. He didn't come up with the ball, and he wants, he wants the penalty. Grimm doesn't quite have the same speed as Brian as he cuts up field. Now with him stride for stride, the safety is going to come over and make a play. Ansley is with him at number 24. That's Densmore who comes up there and bats the ball down at the end of the play. Ansley, Steve, a terrific story, number 27, a young man who played for four years without an ACL. He didn't have an ACL, for goodness sake. That's simply amazing. <laughs> Had surgery on in October of last year and has come back 100%. A great story, number 27. And they get the playoff. They just do barely. Little shovel pass. It's batted away, and they say to Dover an incomplete pass as it hit the turf. You know, you talk about the offensive line for Pittsburgh. Walt Harris said that's their real weakness. That's a tough place to recruit, the offensive and defensive line. Steve, take a look here if this ball was caught. Watch to the middle of the field right here, the yardage that would have been accrued had the catch been made. And look at the white shirts in front right there. Wow. That could have been a big play for Pittsburgh. Iowa State caught a break there. Dave? Yeah, Matt Morgan. Dave, go ahead. Yeah, guys, Matt Morgan uh, apparently has bent back his big left toe on that last exchange. They're looking at him now. They're going to retape him. Should be able to return to the game. All right, Dave, it's getting late. Here's Turman under pressure. Gets rid of it as he was drilled to the turf. And it'll go as an incomplete pass. Was looking for Slade across the middle. Plenty of pressure from Iowa State. 
And Hayward was the guy, Reggie Hayward, number 15, right in the face of Terman that forces him to step up. Watch number 15. We talked about how big players have to make big plays. Again, he's going over reserve. They try and double team him, but he breaks through, pushes him to the middle of the field because he's so conscious of him. He's dropped downfield. Again, great penetration by the part of Iowa State there, third and long. And Andy Lee will come on to punt from his own end zone. Get a good look there at what he's looking at. Jermaine Phillips. He can give Iowa State great field position. And it's Adam Runk calling for the fair catch. A 39-yard punt. And they will have great field position. Iowa State will take over in Pittsburgh territory when we come back. State pitched a shutout in the second quarter. Pittsburgh returned the favor in the third quarter, and it's been a tremendous football game. They've announced the crowd of nearly 42,000. Not bad, considering Pittsburgh and Iowa an awful far, far away from Phoenix, Arizona. Good job by this Insight.com bowl. Get this place filled up and juiced with excitement. Rosie Fells is completing down the sideline to Craig Campbell. Now, the conversation that I wanted to have with you coming out of the break was, what are they going to do offensively? They're going to take some time off the clock, run the ball, grind, grind it out a little bit, or is Rosenfels going to continue to throw? Well, that first down would indicate that they're willing to take some chances here. Great throw by Rosenfels, who, as we pointed out, Steve, has struggled a little bit here in the second half. It's a 20-yard game there. Again, if you're just joining us, Iowa State, they've never won a bowl game. Looking for their first bowl championship trophy. They've got a five-point lead with six and a half to play. From the 30, they go back to the ground. And is Haywood. What a costly fumble earlier that led to a Pittsburgh touchdown. Joe Conlon the stop. I like the courage that was shown there by Steve Loney. I think most people in that situation, you're up by five with six minutes remaining. What do you do? A hand of the halfback, you know, a hand of the fullback, go between the tackles. Instead, he runs the fade route. Interesting enough, being the offensive line coach as well as the offensive coordinator, usually you get a quarterback coach, you know, in that situation. He's very cognizant of what it takes for the running game to be effective. Four wide receivers. Rosenfeld picks one and fires complete. It's Craig Campbell with Spencer on him. Gain of four on that play. Remember, Gomez also does the place kicking. Seven for eight on the season with a long of 46. But I don't know that Iowa State should be content with that with the clock running because a field goal, that means that Pittsburgh is still within just one score, albeit a touchdown and two-point conversion. Third and six. Upcoming, three receivers to the left bottom of your screen. As Rosenfels barks the signals, like they might have changed the play. Some pressure Let's up the middle, Rosenfels dumps it off and could not connect with Haywood. It falls for an incomplete pass. The good pressure came from Purifoy up the middle. See, we're looking at about a 42 to 43 yard attempt here. And as a left-footed kicker, this is the hash where you have to push it as opposed to hook it. Gomez, one of the great punters in Iowa State history. Over the final five games of the regular season, he took over as the place kicker as well. That's why he's only attempted eight field goals. This will be from 41. And the kick is up, and it is good. I tell you, he pushed that one a long way back. That would have been good from 51. Great snap and an excellent hold that time. We've got to give credit where credit is due. Casey Baldwin, the holder, was able to get the laces away quickly. And the result is now that Pittsburgh, even though there might have been a little bit more, more comfortable with a five-point lead, the result now is it's eight for Iowa State. People. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, Dave Ryan from the Insight.com Bowl. The first time ever it being played in Phoenix. First football game ever at the Bank One Ballpark. And what a football game it has been. Mike McKnight puts it in the air. Tory Cox will look to get a return. From the nine, here's Cox. 
bumps into some tacklers, would-be tacklers, and bangs ahead for some extra yardage. He's out to the 28, and that's where Pittsburgh will take over. Dave Ryan takes over for now. Steve Dan McCartney had a preseason goal for his team to make a bowl game, so he gave a visual demonstration when they broke preseason camp in August. In an auditorium, he had all of his assistant coaches bring some sort of bowl momento to show the players. Sweatsuits, watches, briefcases, hats, rings, an example of the gear the players earn when they make a bowl game. Coach McCartney tells us it wasn't just eye candy. It was designed really to paint a picture of what getting to a bowl game can really mean to Iowa State. Tell us the players of the program, and obviously it worked out pretty well. The only goal they failed to get, Dave, this season that they set for themselves was to beat a ranked team. They went 0-3 against those in the top 25. That pass from Terman is incomplete. Kevin Barlow was intended receiver. Terman was under some fire by Tyson Smith. But that was intentional, Steve. They wanted that to happen. They wanted them to blitz so they could have Barlow on the delay route. But Terman just couldn't put it on his hands because he had a lot of grass in front of him. And it had a big game there. Terman in this game, Steve, has been alternately outstanding and poor. He can't, I mean, he's done some great things, but in some other situations, he just hasn't been able to get it right. He's missed his last four attempts. Through 18 touchdown passes this season, second most in the Big East, against only seven interceptions, a phenomenal ratio as he hands off to Barlow, who's taken down for a loss on the play. And will bring up third and long. Well, Steve, I'm thinking here that this is four-down territory. I don't know that Pittsburgh defense is playing well enough that if Pitt doesn't get the first down here on third down, that they can afford the luxury of punting and assuming they're going to get the ball back. Pittsburgh does have two timeouts remaining. 4-12 and counting on the clock. Iowa State in search of their first ever bowl win. 0-4 in previous bowl action. Third and 11 now. Here's Terman. Doesn't feel the pressure. Throws and completes for the first down. Antonio Bryant makes the clutch catch. And that was a split second away from being a sack for Iowa State. Steve, you're exactly right. And give Terman a lot of credit. He hung in there, hung in there, hung in there. And just when it looked like he might get sacked, he steps forward, shakes off the arm, and is able to deliver the ball. This is great poise on the part of Terman. Steps up, third down and 10. He knows he has to deliver. Just from the backside, that's number 44. That's Ryan. Brian Harclaw, who cannot make the play. Bryant does a great job of coming back to the ball and getting the first down. Bryant, five catches, 155 yards, and the two scores, 72 and 44-yard touchdowns. They get that off. You saw the zero on the play clock. Here's Terman. It's a deep corner. Throws a in the middle, and it was a fly ball. The center fielder, Mark Timmons, made the play. Antonio Bryant, the intended receiver, with three red jerseys around him. Now, see, Steve, the idea here is you want to go across your body. They run to the right side. That was a play designed just for here, but Terman could not deliver the ball. He couldn't throw it far enough. Bryant is going to come down here, and then he's going to come all the way back here. They're going to roll to this side. He's going to have to throw across his body to get the ball here. The problem is he's not going to throw it far enough. Now, here's the other problem. Right here, when you know you're not going to get it, Bryant needs to come back and break up the interception. Instead, he keeps fading on the ball. He can't get involved in breaking up the interception. The result is a turnover for the Cyclones. Timmons is a freshman, a redshirt freshman, who made a pick in his very first college game, that against Ohio. And he was the team leader in interceptions this season. That's his fourth of the year. Bryant was outnumbered in a big way there. He was, Steve, but again, you got to jump in the middle of that. Even if it's offensive interference, you don't want to pick. Draw play for Iowa State. Ennis Haywood on the ground. Ramon Walker, his 15th tackle for Pittsburgh. Now, now the question is going to be Walt Harris as to what do you do here with your timeouts? Do you want to save them? Because, of course, first down stop the clock. I'm wondering here if maybe on third down, if Iowa State runs the ball, if this isn't a, an opportune time for Pittsburgh to use the timeout. Remember, they did burn one earlier. Good look at the scoreboard. We were commenting how well set up it is for football in their first ever football game here at the Bank One Ballpark. Rosenfeld completes the swing pass to Chris Anthony. I want to stay in bounds if he could as you get a good look. 
Got a feeling the Insight.com Bowl is here in Phoenix. The Bank One Ballpark for years to come. Did an excellent setup. job. Yeah. Great stuff. You see, we Dave documented how close the sight lines are and how close the fans are to the field itself. I mean, you don't see that in many NFL football-only stadiums. And you got to figure at 37-29 with the field goals, extra points, the stands, especially at the end zone part, they've got to be happy. It's a lot of balls. A lot of free footballs. This is the Insight.com Bowl with two and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Iowa State leading Pittsburgh 37 to 29 in search of their first ever bowl win. Rosenfeld will complete another pass. Craig Campbell on the receiving end. He stays in bounds and the clock continues to tick down. Against Sports Center comes your way immediately following our game. Dan Patrick and Brian Kenny are standing it by. It shows the amazing confidence that they have in Rosenfels. Clearly, you're sitting at home saying, what are they doing? Why do they keep throwing the ball? They're up by eight. Just hand the ball off. Well, in this half, Steve, Iowa State has only had two, two rushing yards. They've been struggling with that. And I guess the issue is, is that you want to live or die with your best guy. Keep it in the hands of your quarterback. Rosenfels, 307 yards through the air. Second and two. Under two minutes to play. And the handoff, Hayward hey, trying to make something out of that. And the clock will continue to tick down. Dave, what do you have? Well, the trophy is almost for Dan McCarter here. Now, during the season, Iowa State plays for three trophy games. The Cyhawk goes to the winner of the Iowa-Iowa State game. The telephone trophy to the Iowa State-Missouri game. And the senior bowl is given by Dan McCarney if his seniors win their last game. But he said to his guys, I want to win a permanent trophy that stays in our trophy case. The can't be just won and lost every year. It looks like they're pretty close to their first ever bowl trophy, guys. What a great story it would be. A minute 35 left here in the fourth. Pittsburgh's used another timeout. We'll be right back. Some of the Iowa State fans that made the trip, many drove some 22 hours to get here. And I would say it'd be well worth the drive. They are able to watch Iowa State win their first ever bowl game. Rosenfels will hand off to Haywood. And Pittsburgh will use its last timeout. Clock is stopped with a minute 28 to play here in the fourth quarter. There's a young man, and I love this phrase. His future is so bright, he needs welder's glasses. Antonio Bryant, a lot of football in his future. Our players of the game, Capital One. The sponsor, and in a rare twist, someone actually asked us who we thought <laughs> the players of the game should be. That looks very much like the open to the broadcast. I think, that, I think it says a lot about star players when they rise to the occasion in big games and do exactly what everybody expects. Antonio Brown with a big day, averaging over 30 yards a catch, and Rosenfels going over 300 yards passing. Delivering in crucial situations. People look at that first half, which, which is where he got the most of his statistics. He came through in a lot of clutch right situations. Yeah, that looks like water. Get the sense it's coming, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, thanks. We wouldn't have known that otherwise. <laughs> we don't need the hint. It's Dan McCarney who could use the hint. McCarney in his sixth year. Told you about the contract extension in 2004. He was the Big 12 Coach of the Year runner-up. An Iowa City native. He took over in November of 94. Instrumental in turning around this program. And I think you've got to give them a lot of credit from this vantage point, Stephen. That's this. So many times in bowl games, teams that haven't been there for so long start off slowly. They did anything but that, you know, in the first half. Getting those drives together and scoring as they did. Rosenfels will take a knee. That's a credit to his staff for having them prepared from the get-go. We talked with Sage Rosenfels. We met with him yesterday, and there was a picture posted at the start of two of these. Oh, really? You're going to show that? And Sage said if he was having a pretty good game and it looked like Iowa State was going to win, we could show it. And here, ladies and gentlemen, a picture of Iowa State quarterback Sage Rosenfels. All right, dude. Yeah. Dan McCarney put it up in his staff to motivate the players, and his teammates came by. Well, whose sister is that? <laughs> no, nope, that was the... Quarterback of Iowa State, Sage Rosenfeld, has had himself a fine game, and he'll go down to the turf. And again, we promised we would only air that if Iowa State was in a winning situation. And Rosenfeld is 
done himself proud on the football field here tonight. Final half minute. Well, what a great way for him to end, and what a great way for the seniors of Iowa State to end their careers. What a thrill. They don't have to, they don't have to go with another play. As you pointed out, Steve, 26 of them on the staff. How gratifying this must be to be victorious in this bowl game. Two rising programs meeting here. Only one cut away with a victory. Rosenfeld to take one last hit, and there is the bath for Dan McCarney. Congratulations to Coach McCarney, the Iowa State Cyclones, and all of their faithful, their first ever bowl championship victory. They win the Inside.com Bowl, 37-29 over Pittsburgh. For Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan, this is Steve Levy. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Congratulations to the Cyclones. They win their first ever bowl game. Now stay tuned for SportsCenter.